You are watching Excess LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 28th, 2024 meeting of the LaPorte County Council. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. Okay. We're going to call the LaPorte County Council regular meeting for October 22nd, 2024 to order. If everybody please silence your phone, we're going to stand for the pledge and we're going to remember, uh, take a moment of silence for Joe um, Everhart Hampel, who passed away, and also uh, my brother-in-law, Bob. So if everybody please stand for the pledge, Mr. Cunningham. What the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilman Cunningham? Present. Councilman Rosenbaum? Present. Councilman Karanka? Present. Councilman Molinar? Present. Councilman Novak? Present. Councilman Dikelski? Present. And Councilman Keel? Present. All seven are here. All appropriations are going to be roll call. Um, moving on, approval of tonight's agenda. Mr. Karanka. Motion to approve with the following adjustments. Uh, if we go to new business item two and uh, page five, Laporte County Building Maintenance uh, Services and Charges for Mitigation Work, the last item for 49174 Both those items would be removed. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion by Mr. Karanka, seconded by Mr. Yagelski. Is there any other questions or comments, changes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And it's nearly mentioned. What's that? Dennis Neary who passed away. The other person I, I just want to mention, uh, Dennis Neary uh, was a state rep and, and was very involved. He had passed away also, so please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. So as we move on with our meeting, um, approval of the minutes from the September 30th workshop memorandum. So moved, Mr. President. Mr. Galski. Second. Second by Mr. Karanka. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those Aye. opposed? Next one is September 30th, regular meeting, meeting minutes. I have one correction. Okay. It is on page 25 of the minutes. I had brought up that the reason why I stated that I was not going to vote for it is that, is that I did not feel that this motion was appropriate for the council to make such a request of the commissioners. And that is not in the minutes, and I'd like that to be added to the minutes. Can you repeat that again, how, how you... Mr. Rosenbaum stated he did not feel this motion is appropriate for the council to make such a request of the commissioners. Any other corrections or was that a motion with that a correction? That's a motion with that correction. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Karanka. Any other changes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Who's opposed? Public comment. Public comment is now open. Anybody from the public who would like to speak? Anybody from the public that would like to speak? Hello, everyone. Hello. Rodney McCormick, 617 Union Street, Michigan City. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting. Um, some of my other fellow commissioners from the social status came requesting for funds. Uh, the, the commissioner office approved it, and I'm here today. I didn't see us on the agenda, but I just wanted to briefly speak, if I may, about some of the stuff that's going on in our city. And I um, and I just want to tell you, page these funds are are sorely needed. After reading the, the Department of Education records, I just want to just say state a couple of numbers to you guys. Um, at our high school in 20, for the 2023-2024 year, 
We had 188 suspension, in-house suspensions, 487 out-of-school suspensions, eight arrests, 122 incidents of violence, and 50 expulsions. We looked at the <laughs> looked at the numbers in regards to attendance for the, our 12th graders last year. They only had a an African American community. We only had a 12.2 percent attendance rating. Um, 11th grade didn't fare much better. I believe it was at 16 percent. The one thing that that just blew me away when I looked at these numbers were. 9.5% of the students who graduated, and this I believe was a class of 294, only they only 28 of them graduated without a waiver. That means 260 of our kids graduated with a waiver. I come to this council, I come over here to Laporte because I do believe in bipartisanship. I believe in working with everybody to make things better. Unlike some of our co uh, colleagues in Michigan City, um, if we all work together, we can make things better for the kids in our community. As African American and the president of the African American males, I just could not believe these numbers. I mean, the, the, the calls for service got sex offenses on it. Um, weapon charges, fight, 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 search warrant, drugs, drugs. It just goes on. It's a whole list that just goes on in our school. So this money will greatly, we, we would greatly like to have this money. And, um, and I hope you guys continue to work with us. But, you know, I just wanted to get that off my chest because I'm hurt behind what I've seen. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, you know. School board got to do what they got to do, and we got to do what we got to do as citizens. And if I can just say anything to everyone out here that's going to listen to this today, every school board in this county, everybody, that's, that's the most important seat to me. And I hope that you guys get out and vote and make your vote count, or else you'll get what we're getting right now in Michigan City. Mr. McCormick. Yes. Just one thing to state. You are on the agenda of tonight, page four towards the bottom. I didn't see it, so thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Any other public comments? Any other public comments? Good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come up and speak. My name is Mike Kellams, I live at 159 Regency here in Laporte. Uh, I wanted to talk to you. I know that you guys are heavily involved in the finances of the county and, and a lot of your work uh, involves and revolves around that. And if you look at tonight's agenda, it's obvious the amount of effort that has to go into it. Um, and it's a, it's a difficult task, but something that, that everybody does very well. That being said, I wanted to bring a ray of light, a little bit of sunshine to some of our county employees. Uh, about 10 days ago, I was working and I heard uh, uh, the, the county start to get busy, our emergency services. There were, it was in the morning. There were a couple of accidents, uh, one down on Highway 30 near State Road 39, one on 800 South in Union Mills. Uh, they were severe. They were talking about bringing in helicopters and very quickly our ambulances got tied up. Uh, and, and for those that are involved in emergency services, understand we have eight ambulances. They're numbered one through eight. Uh, as I was listening to all these calls developed, there were a couple calls that were put out and we were out of ambulances. We are just out of it. And it doesn't happen very often. Uh, you get busy at one time, it kind of uh, uh, ebbs and flows and doesn't happen uh, as often, thank goodness. And uh, as, I, as I continued to listen, I heard a Medic 9 pop up. And we don't have a Medic 9 other than a backup rig or something they use for some standby. And uh, shortly after that, I heard a Medic 10 pop up and go to another call. So a couple days later, I had the opportunity to talk to Eric Fenstermaker, the, the uh, EMS director. And I said, I heard that you guys are really busy. Where did the Medic 9 and Medic 10 pop up? And, and this is what uh, really struck me. And I thought I wanted to bring it to your attention. Uh, because you guys get so involved in the financial stuff, and, and I don't know that the good news always reaches uh, uh, to you and it doesn't get spoken enough at the council meetings or commission meetings for that matter. Uh, they were off-duty employees that had just finished their shift and they came back in and got a backup rig and responded to the calls. Uh, I think that's outstanding of our EMS and, and I think that speaks to why the state of Indiana recognizes them as being a paramedic provider of the year, the sixth time in the 50 years that they've existed. Um, I think it's important uh, that 
We take an opportunity to recognize all of our employees when they do something outstanding like that. And it doesn't get heard of. Nobody would have known it if I hadn't been paying attention or happened to be working that day. I don't know if it would have been recognized uh, outside of the EMS administration. And I thought it was important to bring it to the attention of the council. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, you, Mike. And you know what? I think we need to give them EMS employees a round of applause. Being, being that it is National First Responder Day, I think that's very appropriate. So for to all the first responders throughout LaPorte County and throughout the country, we salute everybody. So anybody else from the public? Anybody on Zoom? Anybody on Zoom that would like to speak? Yeah, this is Commissioner Brzezinski. I can either speak uh, under public or um, department head. Uh, might even be better on public. Um, Looking at your agenda, I know we've had at least three presentations from Enterprise about fleet management, and they showed us uh, where we would take in uh, part of our fleet of old vehicles and so they could sell them, and there would be enough money that we would be replaced with all brand new vehicles at no cost to the county, and that every year after that of managing our fleet, they would save the county a bunch of money and it would make your job a little bit easier for uh, for scheduling uh, for budgeting uh, fleet because it would be a set cost um, but I see that it's not on your agenda so I just wonder where are we at with that uh, it's this is a chance for the county to to do what a lot of other counties and cities are doing all over the, the, the all over the state all over the United States and, and save a lot of money in the meantime but and, and we kind of beat it to death with workshops and presentations, but it's not on your agenda. So what's where are we at? What's going on with that? If 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 I'll discuss it with some of the council members, and if there's a desire, we'll add it to our November agenda. So we'll be watching the best we can do. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Any other public comments? Public comment going once, twice. Public comments closed. Department head reports. Any department heads would like to speak? Uh, Ella Bilderbeck, Laporte County Recorder. I uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Um, I've had 250 of the deed books uh, deacidified. Uh, three of them had new covers put in. They have metal hinges that were broken and six plat books have been treated and uh, restored. So I feel that um, the progress is being made really quickly and um, I'm very happy with the work that's been accomplished so far. So Great. Are all the old books all up? Are they still working on those, updating those? The old books that were down in the basement and stuff? I never had any books in the basement. Mine were all in the vault. I have a two-story vault. The vault. It, so I was lucky. Mine were never in the basement. The, but have those all been updated the, with what you've been doing. You've been working on that. Oh, that's a fraction of it. Okay. Yeah, that's a small it's fraction. A process. Okay. I started no, the deep books because those are the most right. important. Um, and then the next will be the books that keep track of the deep books, which right. are in very poor condition, unfortunately because those were handled a lot more. And uh, so some of the pages are in really poor. That wasn't a trick question. I was just asking. Yeah. I was just asking. We were just talking I, two yeah. different languages, that's all. That's fine. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Any other department heads? Hi, Jeremy Specky from the Parks Department and Mitch Bishop here. But um, Mitch sent you an email last week about a, a grant for solar panels on the roof of, of Red Mill County Park uh, office and, and uh, rental hall. Um, and, and this is something that originally Paul Vincent, when he was working for the county uh, as, a, as the economic development or whatever it was, pre-applied the county uh, for this project, $78,820. Um, and, and we were basically like pre-approved through the, who's this through? It's the uh, U.S. Department of Energy. Yeah, so it's a 100% grant. They pay for it, we pay for it up front, and then they pay us back. Um, and, and Mitch's email, um, basically, it would it, it's estimated, we got an estimate from a, a, a company that it, it will cost 
right around that amount and then uh, it would save over the life of the solar panels it's going to save the county about $140,000 about twenty three hundred dollars in the first year and then each year after it's you know um, it's calculated over 50 years yeah so and we just got that new roof on there um metal roof so that it's not like we're gonna have to put those on and take them off and uh that kind of thing so so i'm i'm hoping for we, we got the call that this was um the 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 final to finalize the application was due by the 31st of october and this was last week that we got this call from Department of Energy. Um, yeah, so we had no idea. Yeah, we didn't we know. In, didn't know he applied. I had talked to Paul about that project, but he applied, um, and we're wanting. We were hoping for a motion of support from the council um, to move forward with the grant. to move forward with the grant and 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 do this project. So you put this at Red Mill. Yeah, it'll be on the the back side of the roof at Red Mill. Yep. So move, Mr. President. Second Motion by Mr. Gelsky, second by Mr. Rosen. And, and can, yeah, just can we just state how much money the gro uh, the gross amount is of what the cost is going to be? The, 70, the grant is seventy eight thousand eight hundred twenty. Just wanted to repeat it. Thank yep. You. Yep. One other quick question: We spoke about roof loading in terms of snow load and the load yep. that these would create. Yeah, I'm yeah I, we get the trust plan and check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'd be fine. We'll double check it though. Okay. I have contacted Mike on that, and he's going to work with us on that as well. Good deal. So thank you. Let the record indicate that Mike gave two thumbs yeah, up on that. Two. Two. <laughs> okay. Mike Poland. Yeah, I see <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Well, in that same vein, Mitch Bishop, a poor county planner, I think uh, a part of that email was also my application to INDOT for Group 3 funds to support uh, two bridge uh, rehabs. One is bridge 114 and the other one is 180. <clears throat> one is on uh, Range Road 114. It's roughly a stone's throw from Kingsford Heights. It's north of Kingsford Heights. And 180 is on 1600 south, about two and a half miles directly south of Hannah. <clears throat> They're both on our top five for replacement in our bridge inspection report. So as you know, about this time of year, there's always an open call and we try to do the best to get the most money we can. And with that, um, I sent you a commitment letter. A commitment letter is required to apply for these every year. Um, unfortunately, the grant doesn't open until November 1st and it, it closes November 24th, which is before your next meeting. So I need a commitment letter signed prior to that so I can include it in the application package. Rough, roughly, it's $3.2 million I'm going to be receiving 80% um, for those two bridges. And you'd be responsible for the 20, naturally, like every every year. Yeah. Shrigowski. Mitch, could you um, make sure <clears throat> that we give us the packet with those? Because we didn't see any pictures. I don't, we, oh, we you know, I haven't put together the application yet, but I will. It's not an application. Oh. This is the engineering the when they came out and looked at it, this is not. Oh, you you're talking about the bridge inspection report? Yes. Yeah. Those you know, are the top, which is fine. We don't agree, we don't disagree with you. Can we please see the photos? Yeah. Of no problem. I'll send them both to you. I sent them to all the all you guys. So I'm no problem. President. Second. Motion by Mr. Ugalski, second by Mr. Cunningham. Is there any other questions? I don't, did I send you a copy of these letters? If that, I, uh, I don't believe you did. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Those aye. opposed. Aye. Thank you. Uh, any other department heads? I'll make it quick. Okay. Lynn Swanson, LaPorte County Coroner. Um, I spoke to you all a couple months ago about a program that we were trying to launch um, for psychological autopsies. You approved um, appropriating money from the coroner's office to uh, put with the grant that we received from the Healthcare Foundation. Uh, the program was launched last month during suicide awareness month. Um, the deputy that we hired, um, that is a psychologist, Dr. Drapu, is um, working with families now to try to gather information, offering them assistance for um, counseling or whatever other treatments they may need, and um, trying to get his data put together. So as soon as I have some data from him, I'll present that as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Any other department heads? Any other department heads? 
Anyone Zoom? No. Hearing none. Moving on to um, there. There is one other correction I want to make. I want to go back to to the minutes. In the minutes, it it was stated. Um, and forgive me, the community correction director, Marika Beatty, clarified that... Page number, please. Uh, page number five. But it's not a correction, but it states that no formal vote was taken on the motion. So the motion to support, to approve the retroactive pay for the employee back to their starting date was made by Mr. Cunningham and second by Mr. Yagalski. So if we could, um, I, I don't remember us never voting on that, but I know they watched the video, so I'm... Maybe we skip the vote on that. So at this time, is that, can you, you want to make those? My motion stands. Mr. Yagowski stands. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? Thank you. Thank you. So we corrected that. Um, liaison reports. Mr. Cunningham. I'll wave. Mr. Yagowski. I'll wave just except for the one thing that uh, lost my sister 16 years ago with breast cancer. We're pink, we're pink tonight for breast cancer. I don't want to jump on Adams, but he'll tell you the same thing. So, for Breast Cancer Month, definitely. Thank you. Um, just two things: attend the AIC conference and the auditors conference. Adam, wave. Wave. Justin, wave. Wave. So, uh, moving on. Correspondence: a letter from Laporte City Mayor Veterans Committee. Would you like it read or no? It's pretty short. Just up to you. That give us a. We, we can do. Um, it's in. A, sorry, I think it's in our package. It's an invitation it's an, into the an invitation veterans. to the mayor's veterans, uh, the Veterans Day program at the Civic Auditorium, ten thirty a.m. November eleventh, Veterans Day. The Civic is of course at ten oh one Ridge Street in Laporte. Thank you. From Lisa Rosenbaum, Mayor's Veterans Committee. Thank you. Uh, moving on, we have Ordinance twenty twenty three dash one two amendment. Sure. Number three to the 2024 salary ordinance. You want to deliver? By title only? Mr. President, I make a motion to read by title only. Motion by Mr. Yagelsky by title only. Second. Second. Mr. Karanka. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? For clarification, this ordinance is just clearing up and put dot in the I's and crossing the T's for salary changes. Okay. Tim. The motion to Did approve. Do you read it? Do you read it? You didn't read it yet. By title only. Did you guys vote on it? We we asked for title only. Yes. We, vote, yeah. we, did. we, we did. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The two thousand and twenty four <laughs> salary ordinance amendment number three. Mr. President, make a motion to adopt. Motion by Mr. Gowski. Second. Second by Mr. Molinar. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Next item is the. Oh, oh wait. Did Justin, did you? I said aye. Okay. Just want to make sure. I didn't. Merge. Next item is Ordinance 2024 one zero A, Laporte County Solid Waste Budget Adoption. Mr. President, make a motion to read Ordinance 2024-10A by title only. Motion by Mr. Yagelsky, title only. Second by Mr. Rosenbaum. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Please, uh, please mark me as an abstention since I'm not physically present. All right. I'm not allowed to vote on it. Thank you, gentlemen. It's probably the last time you see me this year, so I want to wish you ones that are running for election good luck. The ones that have served, we appreciate all the support you've given us through the couple of years. And the ones that are going to be switching tables, we wish you the best of luck also. So Thank you. Let thank the record you. indicate that Clay Turner looked at me when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say anything. Oh, we still got to pass it. Yeah. We haven't passed it yet. I would, oh, boy, that was. Be sure they didn't vote on that. <laughs> oh. And just to be clear. Gowski has a question. So uh, before we Did vote I on it, um, I like that back in the past, years past, the raises for the Port County Solid Waste budget will be reflective of what the council receives this year. 
I understand that, and that's normally the way it is. I take it to my board at our December meeting for our salary ordinance. Yeah, okay. and I just, great. Yeah. Just we just didn't want you to do something and we didn't do it. Oh, don't or, think that Councilman Mollenhauer is going to let me get away with doing something <laughs> that you guys did. Okay. Good. Good. Keep me in line. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Try. Right. By title only. Yes, Mr. President. Ordinance or resolution for appropriations and tax rate ordinance number 2024-10A for the LaPorte County Solid Waste Management. Mr. President, I make a motion for ordinance 2024-10A to be adopted as read. Second by Mr. Yagowski, second by Mr. Rosenbaum. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. And as always, Mr. Auditor, that has to be uploaded by November 3rd on Gateway. Thank you. Mr. Adamski, where are you? Next item is Ordinance 2024-10B, Hannah Township Budget Adoption. Mr. President, I can make a motion to Ordinance 2024-10B to be read by title only. Motion by Mr. Gal, second title only, seconded by Mr. Crock up. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Please, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Ordinance of resolution for appropriations and tax rates for the Hanna Township Ordinance Number 2024-10B. Mr. President, I think a motion for Ordinance 2024-10B to be adopted as read. Motion by Mr. Egalski. Second. Second by Mr. Cunningham. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, under discussion, I just want to give a shout out to Hanna Township. Uh, last year, a member of the public came and spoke during this uh, this budget hearing, or and. Uh, uh, one of the issues they brought up was uh, the township's investment policy. Since last year, I, I spoke with trustee uh, Tony Wallace recently and he informed me that it looks like they're on track to make about $2,000 in interest revenue using Trust Indiana. So just a shout out to them for being a, a model township and how they're managing and investing their funds. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next item is Ordinance 2024-10C, LaPorte County Budget Adoption. Mr. President, I can make a motion for 2024-10C to be read as title only. Motion by Mr. Ugalski. Second. Second by Mr. Karanka. By title only. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> you voted. Mr. President, ordinance of resolution for appropriations and tax rate for LaPorte County, Indiana, ordinance number 2024-10C. What's your pleasure? Mr. President, question, um, so this is 2024-2024-2025. What's this ordinance for? Yes, the 2025 budget. Okay, just see. Okay, but okay. Yeah, for uh, the Mr. year President. ending December 31st, 2025. <clears throat> okay, Mr. President, I have to remind the auditor that uh, Purdue University, we don't have, see any raises this year. Purdue University always gives raises to their employees, but they expect us to pay for it. We don't pay, for, they, have to, they have to pay for their own raises if they adopt their raises. That would need to be when they pro <clears throat> provide their contract to the commissioners, they need to look at that so they should be paying they should be paying every year should be paying for their own raises because they give a well above what we do so mr president like to make a motion to adopt for laporte county uh budget adoption for 2024 10 c as read motion by mr yugowski i'll second that second by mr molenauer any other questions or comments None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Extension. Extension. A nay and an extension. Okay. Uh, the uh, the third page is this, your signature page. Um, can we get the Hannah one back from you as quick as possible to give to Mr. Damsky so he can leave, please? I think it's sitting down here. It's right here. Oh, right here. Right there. Send that one back down if you could. Yes, Once oh, it's Thank you, Brenda. Come over that way. Yeah. Okay, he's going he's gonna to grab it. I got it. Only through me. Oh, I gotta, I gotta do a lot of tests. It was better to get active, actually. I don't like having you by 
This is. I think it just needs ten. Oh. Gotcha. Probably give you solid ones. Mr. Turner, better take this one. No, you can not. Oh, wait, here we is. Is this is this the one? This is this is his. Yeah. No, this is ours. Choose. Hannah's down there. Hannah's been through already. Yeah. Wait a second. We got it. Hanna Barbera. Oh wait a second. That was Hannah's. I gotta take that back. I gotta fix something. Seriously. I thought it was a different one. <coughs> oh. You marked the wrong box? Yeah. First one. First one. Not for you guys. That's... <clears throat> yeah. The initial... I apologize, Mr. President. Clear. We didn't call roll. Thank, Thank you. Sir. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure I don't want to be in the middle. No, don't in the middle of this. Next all right. Bottom. Yeah. So that completes all our ordinances. It does. We approved the budget. Everything. Yeah. She wants it. She wants it. Okay. For something we missed, Mr. Gelsky. No, he's getting to it. Moving on to old business. Tabled request from the September regarding the HR assistance. Is there any desire to remove that from the agenda at this time? Is there any desire to remove that from the agenda at this time? If not, it will remain on the agenda. Moving on to new business. Consider approval of council president's authority to hire replacement positions, Laporte County Animal Control, the assistant director, and a Clerk in the sheriff's office. Those are the two. Motion to approve. Both. Both. Second by Mr. Rosenbaum. Second by Mr. Karanka. Any questions or comments? Three none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Next item is Health Department. Amanda Laner, Director of the Health Department, regarding the nurse pay grid. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Do you want me to just dive right in, or do you have questions about dive what right in. to you? Dive. Dive. Dive, dive. We've been talking about the last several years about getting nursing salary raised up to be more competitive in the area and to make it, um, even with the other health departments um, in the state, I provided a study that was done by the IU School of Fairbanks. Um, that compared health departments within the state of Indiana and also within the EPA Region 5 showing salaries so next year um, and also the surrounding counties. Um, yeah, the last since I've been since before COVID, we have not been fully staffed in the nursing department. If you remember, I gave up one of my nursing spots to be able to get an MA um, to give us some relief, but I still have a vacant spot. Um, and it will hire somebody, last for a couple of months, and hire somebody might last a year or two. Hire somebody, it's just been a complete revolving door and it keeps coming back to salary. So we now also have our Health First Indiana funds, which is coming directly from the state to pay salary. So it's not coming out of tax levy or general funds or any of that. So I submitted a proposed pay grid. Just go through that pay grid real quick, would you please? Just so that people in the public can hear it. So So starting salary after um, six months probation, uh, RN would be at $56,585 starting, and the nursing manager would be at $60,218 starting. 60218 I think is that right? It's your pleasure. This would be for 2025. Correct. For Correct. 2025. Correct. Yes, sir. I just want to clarify that we're not, hmm. this is not a retroactive. No, sir. You'll have sufficient funds from the Indiana. Yes. 
Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Cunningham, second by Mr. Karanka. Is there any other questions on the nursing pay grid? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next item is the fund 8275 okay, budget yes. for 2025. That would be paying for our the um, position that you approve the um, health specialist slash school liaison coming out of a fund directly from the state. There's four hundred forty thousand dollars that were received um, for that school liaison. Great. That will pay that position for about four and a half years. Motion to approve. Second by Mr. Karanka, second by Mr. Molenauer. Is there any other questions or comments regarding fund 8275? Does anybody have a copy of it? Is it in our packet? It's in the packet? It should be in the packet. I submitted it all. You got a copy of it? We just, we got the sheet. Yeah. Um, okay, let it go. Is that it? That's it. Yeah, right there. Got it. Got it. It's not in the sort of format that anticipated. So, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Did somebody make a motion? I missed. Next item is aye. updated budget for fund 1161. So, that's for the nurses for next year for to update so it matched the 144s for next year. Motion on that. First, was it in the budget that was just passed? Do we need to reamend the salary ordinance now? Well, it wouldn't be the salary ordinance because that was for two. This will go to the new salary. Twenty fives. Yes. Okay. We just amended twenty three um, for the retroactive pay. Yes, we did. For the I think so. Mr. Rosemont, for more of a clarification, are you asking more for the amending the budget that we just passed? Yes. Because if this affects twenty twenty five, then we need to go back and amend the budget. Uh, Rhonda, um, is uh, the 1161, was that in the budget or is that a separate? Well, it's in. It's, I think she's there, isn't she? Yeah. It's not coming out of the general fund, so is that? It's a question. But I mean, it is. It's, there's a, for, I think it does. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> so everything was in the budget except, uh, and I forget, uh, Amanda, if you can remind me what title it was, and I'll leave a note for the next auditor. But one amount did not get done before it was submitted, uh, which I think is the supervisors. Is that the one that we found out was low? For next year? Yeah. It was just, it was supervisors and nurses. They were There's only one of them I think that's wrong, but what will happen is because it wasn't done before the budget was advertised, it will need to be appropriated next year. So, but, so, so you can't amend the uh, budget now. We just approved a budget that's not correct? That we know has a correction? No, you adopted a budget. You can't change anything after you advertise it. Once it's advertised, remember we had the note on there, you can't, adver you can't yeah, can, adopt can, higher can, than what's I, advertised. I get it. I get it. Okay. So it will have to be appropriated next year, and I'll leave a note on my desk. There's a note of $82,283 that will need to be um, added in, in after January. So just a point of clarification as I'm looking at this ordinance, I see all the funds listed and 1160 isn't on our standard funds. You go to the home rule funds. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Otter, 1161. And 1161 is not listed on our home ruled funds either. It's just not listed on this document at all. Just might have to approve it. So it looks like the first of the year, you're going to have to appropriate the monies out of these funds and we'll get it on the salary ordinance and then pray. They were approved already, so they will be on the salary ordinance, just so you know. It just needs to be appropriated. Well, they weren't approved because they're just approving it right now. No, they had to approve it to be advertised. <coughs> I don't, I'll, okay. Um, I don't follow. Yeah. I'm, I'm serious. I don't follow all right. that. All right. All right. So updated budget for fund 1161. Is there a motion? Is 
Is there a motion? I just said we have to do it in 2025. We'll look to our attorney. Is there other belt and suspenders, Mr. Rosenbaum? Do it I now. Get it appropriated if it needs to be appropriated in 2025. Got it. Motion approved. Motion by Mr. Karanka. Seconded by. Second. Mr. Cunningham. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Yes. Mr. Yagalski. President. Um, sorry, I, I forgot to do this when we talked about the budget. So, motion to uh, adjourn the 2025 uh, budget process. There's a motion to adjourn the 2025 Second. budget process. Seconded by Mr. Rosenbaum. Is there any other questions or comments? Just brings the budget to it. meeting. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. I'm, I'm just, I forgot about that. Sorry. All right. Technicality something. Next item, moving on to appropriations, transfers, and requests. LaPorte County Health Department requesting transfer um, for the salary increase for 2024, $762. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Yeah. Rosenbaum. Seconded by Mr. Cunningham. Mr. Cunningham. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next time is LaPorte County Parks Department requesting a transfer to purchase a trailer in the amount of $3,999.99. Motion to approve. Mr. President, I'll, I'll give the penny for a second. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Egalski with penny. a question. Oh, and a penny. You know. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Next item is re Park Department's request, and this is for the uh, grant. Um, it's a $20,000 grant, and we're appropriating the money for it. It's all going to come back. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. the next two items cover that. Uh, so it's an additional appropriation for a 2020, uh, for a grant 24 for bike and pedestrian grant. Uh, for the consultant, $20,000. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Molenauer and Mr. Karanka. Roll call, Mr. President. Yep. Is there any questions or comments before we call the roll? Hearing none. Councilman Rosenbaum. Yes. Councilman Yagelski. Aye. Councilman Kyle. Aye. Councilman Molenauer? Aye. Councilman Karanka? Aye. Councilman Cunningham? Aye. Councilman Novak? Aye. Seven ayes. Next item is request an appropriation for the claim for non reverting park fund. Uh, this is the, part the match. Part of the match. So yes. this is part of the match for the, um, <clears throat> the grant, the $20,000 grant. Motion approved. Second. Motion by Karanka, seconded by Mr. Rosenbaum. Any questions or comments? Out of what? I'm sorry. Well, it's it's out of their fund. It's out of their non-reverting fund. Yeah, it's it's money in our non-reverting fund that will just be put into to cover the rest of the cost. Yeah, yeah. On that one. Oh, okay. So just put all these on for nothing. Hmm. And we need these. They put these on for nothing. That was a list of stuff. Sorry, let me go. I'm confused. That's the next one. Yeah. Right. Hang on. Um, do we need to do a roll call on that? Nope. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to stick around for this one? I imagine. Next item is LaPorte County Park MS4 Planning Commission and Building Department requests additional appropriation from several different accounts for capital per purchase. A grant match for electric trucks and public charging stations, $90,000. <laughs> this is the continuation from last month. I think we all of us came up before you. I think we're minus MS4 director tonight. But uh, you instruct us to come back this month for an appropriation. This is for the four Ford Lightnings, the EV trucks, 
of course uh, Jeremy to the left of me is getting two Mike's getting one MS4 is getting the other one yeah. and also a, a four what do you want it's bay or charger station at the parks department um, our match on that is 90,000 but we will be getting upon receipt of the vehicles $7,500 back from the IRS so it'll be minus 30 so and, and they have been ordered Craig yeah, I posted. We, we placed the order as it instructed last month. Got it. Mr. Gowski. Just a question. So um, I know it's probably convenience and everything else, but I think something like this is good to put on the public for uses for everything. Is there any way this could be plugged in at the fairgrounds instead? That's right. Well, oh, so, so the, yeah. the public charging station or the... No, no just the charging station one itself because it can be utilized if we want to. It, it's, it just good management to put it in the public in my opinion so if it's not then you need to tell me where's the four yeah. vehicles going is so so, going so each one? of the vehicles comes with a charger that can be plugged into um, right. the 220 or, or 220 220 out 20 221 you can yeah. go to 440 you so, can super so, so one of them one of those okay. will be thank you one of those will be at the parks department or two of those will be at the parks department um one will be wherever you guys need it and then the other would be water. yeah so water. so the in the public charging station would be at one of the parks for the public to be able to use and i just would like to see if that could be put in the fairgrounds but it's my this is my opinion mm -hmm. uh, we'd we have could, to check on we could, i could definitely check on that i mean it, it was written in the grant to, for the parks so we could see if we can yes, amend it the, the, the thing it wouldn't be a it's not a public charging station. The one is. The one is. The one is. Okay. The, well, and the thought was that what better place to spend 45 minutes or an hour at a park to where you have something to do besides just, you know. Why it's charging. People want to spend on. time at the mind, This is the way the future, so it would make sense to put it in a central location like the, but that. That's just my opinion. Was it at Red Mill? Is that where it was going to be? Or is, yeah, yeah, the thought was that we, the thought I had was it's right there between I-94 and the toll road, so you you're, you can <sighs> catch those people plus you're, you know, in a, in a heavily yeah. populated area, right. somewhat populated area. There'll, there'll be more opportunities too for more public. There's more dollars available and maybe in the future ones we could put it in downtown. If if we can't, this one, Mark. Yeah, what do we get? I'm... Yeah. Motion to approve out of lit economic development, 1112. Right. Yeah. Second. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Molinar. Any other questions or comments? Very none, roll call please. Fund. Councilman Cunningham. Hey. Councilman Keel. Hi. Councilman Karanka. Hi. Councilman Molinauer. Hi. Councilman Rosenbaum. Hi. Councilman Yagelski. Nay. And Councilman Novak. Hi. Thank you. Five two. Which fund? I'm sorry, was that again? I apologize. Which what? Fund. One, 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 two. Lit. Thank you. Next item is weights and measurements. Requesting a transfer. Of Second. Five dollars. Motion by Mr. Cunningham. Cunningham. Seconded by Mr. Rosenbaum. Any questions? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Aye. Thank you. Next item is Lapore County Auditor. Uh, Transferring uh, for the annual fee for bond five hundred dollars. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Cunningham. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Aye. Next item is requesting a fund transfer from Riverboat to Rainy Day Fund, the amount of five hundred and thirteen thousand one hundred and fifty eight dollars and seventy nine cents. Motion to approve. I'll second and then a comment. Motion by Mr. Karanka, second and by Mr. Rosenbaum. In something that was very unusual, and I and I double checked this, we received a very large payment recently, uh, which was unusual, a one point two million dollar payment. Am I correct? Um, I couldn't. That's yeah, okay. Off the, well, off the cuff. I'm going to share. It happens here. once a year. Yeah. So we did receive a very large payment, and if because I had remembered that we had um, been keeping up to date and even awkwardly with the last payment, so this uh, this gets us caught up. 
Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Next time's request additional appropriation for the LaPorte County Drug Service Fund. This is their their I'm just going to go to the bottom line. Current budget is $187,964, less the current receipts that they've received of $66,280. So the amount requested is $121,685. I, I guess I have a question. Is that this was never budgeted? It was budgeted. Um, if you'll remember, what it is is it's budgeted for some reason in their supplemental fund, but it's supposed to be budgeted in the general fund. So what has happened in all of the years before now was the auditor's office would move that money from unappropriated general to their supplemental fund to pay the difference. Um, but we got it fixed for next year. It will be in the general fund, but we do have to take care of it one more year um, because it wasn't known until after that budget was made so the budget we ado adopted is correct correct yes okay. what's your pleasure motion to approve Motion by Mr. Fund. Keel. From which fund? You know, strong preference. Um, well, let me, can I can I can I just add? All right, that's not one listed. <laughs> yeah, it's listed. Okay. Oh, there is another line. Um, probably ARP then. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Karanka. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Councilman Rosenbaum. Nay. Councilman Yagelski. Nay. Councilman Keel. Aye. Councilman Mullenauer. Nay. Councilman Karanka. Aye. Councilman Cunningham. Nay. And Councilman Novak. Nay. We have three ayes and four nays. Motion fails. Just keep in mind that that will have to be done by the end of the year. It's in the statute that the council pays for it. Or that the county pays for it. Moving on to the Lapore County Auditor. Request an additional appropriation on behalf of the Board of Commissioners for payroll deductions. Budgets from several different accounts, personal services. This is for the group health insurance. This would, am I correct that this would take us through the end of the year? One million eighteen thousand five hundred and forty nine thousand dollars. Mr. President. Mr. Yugowski. Uh, question. Um, I'm sorry. This one here, I've looked, I've read it through. I just don't get it. Th this isn't, wasn't this part of the commissioner's budget? I know. Where's our money in the commissioner's budget? It says this was written into the commissioner's budget from twenty-three to into twenty-four for the, for this year's budget. I understand, but there was funds in there. All all these did they use these funds for something else? How do we go through? So so Medicare, not only oh, not only is there the group health insurance for one million plus, uh, there's Medicare, OS, OAS, DI, and Perf. Perf. Um, we underfunded the PERF by $318,000. Adam, I'm agreeing with you, but we didn't underfund these things. These things aren't. Is there an answer for this? I know you had, uh, Randy, you had asked Carl to come look at it. Uh, did he give you a report or? So the, the health ins the group health insurance premium we had talked about because the there was $800,000 increase last year that was never put into this budget. Plus, I think there's about 50 additional employees that were added to the policy that were not, uh, we were not um, budgeted for. Budgeted for. 
Yeah, and looking at these, they've gone negative every year. So I assume it just wasn't, since no one was watching it last year, it just may not have been budgeted correctly. So, but PERF, <clears throat> we're short $318,000 plus in PERF? No one's watching. All of those numbers are what we've come up with, yes. Does make any sense, Mr. President? You want to table it? Motion to table. Second. Motion to table by Mr. Yagowski, seconded by Mr. Karanka. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. I have one nay. Is that for, oh, uh, 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 we'll ask for a clarification. Are we adding, is that including the $500,000? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay, that's, that's I just want to make sure we're yes, keeping sir. that separate. Roll call. Keel. Councilman Keel. This is on the prior vote that we just took or on something Motion new? Motion to table. Motion to table. I'm nay on that. Okay. Councilman Rosenbaum. Aye. Councilman Mullenauer. Aye. Councilman Cunningham. Aye. Councilman Yagelski. Aye. Councilman Novak. Aye. Councilman Karanka. Aye. Six ayes, one nay. It's tabled. Next item, personal services fund 4,700 group health insurance claims in the amount of $500,000. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Yagowski, seconded by Mr. Karanka. Out of what fund? Doesn't say that. It's up above it. It's up above at the beginning. You oh, think of it. You all might want to consider oh, no, this economic lit because the capital improvement oh. plan, we're going to we have a line item for $2 million for health insurance. It's going to go before the commission and it's for 2024 and 2025. So I'm just giving you the recommendation. Got it. Mark, is that you? I'm good with that. I'm good with it. Yep. All right. Economic development lit. All those in favor say aye. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Never mind. Roll call. Roll call. Councilman Cunningham. Nay. Councilman Karanka? Aye. Councilman Rosenbaum? Nay. Councilman Keel? Aye. Councilman Yagelski? Aye. Councilman Mullenauer? Aye. And Councilman Novak? Aye. Five ayes, two nays, motion passes. Next item to LaPorte County Sheriff requesting transfer for Excuse office. Excuse me one second if I can. Uh, Otter Sabos, uh, just think I'll have to leave here soon, but will you make sure uh, to discuss with them if uh, the wages, if salary goes negative, we won't be able to pay with that being adjourned? You, you mean the the previous item that did not pass? The item that was tabled yes. that we're not discussing now. That's what I'm talking. Next item is LaPorte County Sheriff requesting a transfer office supplies in the amount of $300. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion happen. by Mr. Cunningham, seconded by Mr. Rosenbaum and Mr. Karanka. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Next item is requested an appropriation from County Sheriff's Continuing Education Fund for service charges, other services, and charges in the amount of 15000 Mr. Rosenbaum and Mr. Cunningham. Any questions on that one? Mm -hmm. None. All in favor say aye. 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 Roll okay. call. No, there's no roll call. We don't need a roll. Oh. Got it. Sorry. False alarm. Next item, says we will need a roll call on, says is uh, finishing off the Sheriff's Pension Fund, $95,966. Where would you like to finish it off from? Lit Economic Development? I make a motion to, no, at Riverboat, because oh. there's enough funds, okay. and that's where we've been paying for it in the past. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum out of Riverboat. Second. Second by Mr. Kronka. Roll call. Councilman Rosenbaum. Aye. Councilman Novak. Aye. Councilman Cunningham. Nay. Councilman Mullenauer. Abstain. Councilman uh, Yagowski. Nay. Councilman Keel. Aye. And Councilman, can't read that, Karanka. Aye. Four ayes, one abstention, two nays, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is LaPorte County Coroner requests an appropriation from the Coroner's Autopsy Fund for services and charges in the amount of $10,000. This is coming out of your fund. Motion okay. to approve. Wait, wait. Can I explain what's going on here? 
This is an in and out account. It's a 4,000 account. I send a bill to whatever um, institution for the offender. They process it, send me the money back. I take the money, I send it to the pathologist. Apparently now, because we've been doing it wrong for years, um, they say I have to come for an appropriation every time we receive money from the state to pay the pathologist. My thing was, sometimes it takes the state two months to send a check. If I miss a cutoff date to come in and ask for an appropriation, it's going to be another two months before this pathologist gets paid. He's not going to be happy. So what we're asking for is the $10,000 to start this fund. It's going to be an in and out. Whatever comes, whatever is in there at the end of the year is going to, if there's no other bills outstanding, will stay or go back in. So, members of the council, I've prepared an ordinance, which I'll bring to you next month, establishing this prison autopsy fund. And so you would seed that fund with the $10,000, and that way the, the bills can be paid on a rolling basis. You, it'll, the fund will receive reimbursement from the state, and then it will, at the end of the year it will not revert to the general fund, and that way the monies will be there and the autopsies can be paid for. The autopsies are $5,000 a crack. So you really seed in the fund with two autopsies. This is for the prison autopsies. Right. Yeah, you don't right. pay that much for right. We Thirty-five right. autopsies. Right. These are the ones we get reimbursed. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, right. yeah. um, I'm supportive of this, but I have a problem um, on the amounts available for funds. It says that we have thirteen thousand and change in it, and the fund balances on page three says that we have three thousand in it, which is correct. Are you asking D. Martino? No, I'm not asking okay. D. Martino. <laughs> okay. Anybody who can answer that. Because I, I one is supposed to support the other one, then it should match. Okay. I didn't know what you were talking about when you said thirteen thousand. That three thousand some odd dollars that's in there has I don't know where it came from. It was there long before me. I think it was there before Bob Cutler. I don't know what happened if money got put in there by mistake. But if you'll look back over the last years, every year at the end of the year, that same amount is still in there and it just keeps rolling over. We never use it because, like I said, this is a money in, money out account. So I don't know where that extra 3000 And that 3000 won't even pay for one autopsy. Right. So, in effect, we're giving you 10 to pay for two and that three would just stay in there, basically, right? So at some Either, point, we e just need to appropriate an odd number to... Yeah, About take that, that three thousand or whatever's in there. If because if nobody can figure out where it ever came from, take that and subtract it from the ten thousand and appropriate, or move it back, or move it move it back to where it's supposed to be. I don't know, because like I said, it's every year right. since I've been here, that amount is always in there and it just rolls over and rolls over because it's around the corner. We never use it. I mean. The, I, I'm going to make a motion to approve with the assumption that there's the 10000 in there to pay for it. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum. I'm sorry, could I have a, do I, could I ask him a question? You're saying that there's 10000 in the account right now? No, I'm saying, I have, I'm saying I have two different, no. I'm saying where we want to pull the money from. Okay. I'm saying I have two different numbers. Okay. And the difference is ten thousand. There is ten thousand dollars in the account right now that we received back in September, but I haven't been able to pay the pathologist. This is yet. appropriating that money out of that account. To pay the to pay the outstanding Correct. pathology bill. Right, right. Yep. So if you have a, an not amount of ten thousand and an amount of thirteen thousand. I, I, I just have two different it's not numbers. transferring money in into it. Account. We have one paper that says there's only three thousand dollars in there. Right. Another one says there's ten thousand. Right, because or thirteen thousand. Right, because we put or there was ten thousand dollars that came in, but I haven't been able to pay it out because they won't appropriate it anywhere. This is on the appropriation, assuming. I think you can assume that the thirteen thousand three forty nine is accurate because it's should be adjusted for any claims or potential claims on that fund. All right, I can't assume. Was that, that a motion? It was my motion. I said that. All right, four. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Molenauer. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 As opposed? Okay. Didn't need to do a, I mean. No, no, no. no. Yeah, just. Not new money. 
Right. <laughs> Laporte County Juvenile. Thank you. Thank you. 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 Laporte County Juvenile Probation Department requests an appropriation from Indiana Probation Fund. So this is appropriating within their own fund. For Motion 13, to approve. Second. Thirteen hundred ninety dollars. Yeah, Motion by Mr. Cunningham. Seconded by Mr. Karanka. All uh, questions. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed. Aye. Thank you. The next item is the Laporte County Prosecutor. This is uh, appropriations for the deposits received for a reimbursable grant. Yes, sir. APS with our contract with the state where we provide APS services. So this is a deposit coming back in? Yes, sir. What's your pleasure? Motion approved. Second. Motion by Mr. Karanka, second by Mr. Cunningham. For the sixty-two thousand one hundred and seventy-six oh seven. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Aye. Thank you. The next item is request an appropriation for the deposits received for reimbursable grant for adult protective services in the amount of thirty-one thousand twenty-eight dollars and eighty-one cents. Motion approved. Motion by Mr. Crocker. Second. Second by Mr. Cunningham. All Thank questions? It, yeah. The number. The numbers don't add up. 23.6. Well, they do not, do they? Yeah, 45. Just Health insurance is probably not 23 grand, Michael. It's probably 2,700 or something like that. Okay, right? um, then I'm, as adjusted, right. the net amount of $31,000. Yeah, that's, so that's probably it. There's probably an extra number there. Looking at the worksheet here. Health insurance is three thousand seven hundred five dollars yeah. thirty eight cents. Yeah, so the two there is hanging. Two shouldn't be yep. there. We apologize. A little better. Good. All right. So there's a motion and a second. You know, better. as amended. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed. Next item: continuation appropriation reimbursable receipts for adult protective services for. Personal services health insurance in the amount of six hundred dollars. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Rosebaum, second by Mr. Cunningham. Is there any questions on that one? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Aye. Next items request an appropriation for deposits received from reimbursable grant for the prosecutor for victims advocate in the amount of twenty six thousand nine hundred forty eight dollars forty nine cents. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum. Second. Second by Mr. Karanka. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Next item, request an appropriation for deposits received for reimbursable prosecutors PCA fund in the amount of $576.74. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum. Second. Second by right. Mr. Karanka. Oh. Question, what does Question. PCA stand for? PCA is the, for, it's a basically our cut, a small cut of the amount, the monies that we get, we receive in child support. So if we collect a certain small sliver of all the monies that we collect. PCA, what's it stand for? I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, all right. I, 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 if you don't know, know then I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. About not knowing. <laughs> yeah. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Then requested an appropriation from the prosecutor's um, pre-trial diversion fund for capital purchase for the fire door, twelve thousand dollars. Out of a different fund. That should be in the motion motion to approve. Oh, second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Cunningham, second by Mr. Rosenbaum. Any question? Just clarification on this is fire door in Michigan City Courthouse located right. back of your department or uh, toward the front. Towards front. Okay. We are we already have a contract. Or well, we have bids that we got already. We were just waiting for this to move forward. We went forward. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Those opposed? I'm sorry. I was thinking I had to do a roll call again. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you just look at him and get a few? Yeah. The Poor County Highway Department requests an appropriation from Cume Bridge for service charges, engineering consultant bridge 39 located at 
25 east over the Little Kinkakee River in the amount of $203,000. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Motion to. You read perfectly. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Karanka. This is an appropriation. Go ahead. Uh, which firm got the uh, the contract for this bridge work? Uh, SJCA right now. They're they're actually we haven't awarded the contract. You guys will sign it. They're the low bid on the contract. SJCA is. There were. Okay. We'll sign what? We don't sign bids. No, the, no, the contract for the engineering firm to do. We don't consulting. sign it. Commissioners. Commissioners will sign it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. We don't bid. Right, right. I'm sorry. Contrary to public yes. belief, we don't yes. bid. Yes. 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 For yes. I do that. Yeah. I served on the council for 25 years. I know. I'm sorry. Yes. yes. The commissioners would well, sign the contract. Some people here don't understand that. So. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I'm not state. state. And they're the ones that sign it. So yeah, SJCA was the low uh, consulting firm on for the design of the bridge. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. Any other questions or comments? It's an appropriation out of there. We don't need to. It's a transfer. We're spending money. Is that, oh, is that it's not an additional appropriation. It's not an, it's additional. Not an additional appropriation. No. Okay. Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. Next time is LaPorte County Recorder. Request an appropriation from the elected officials training fund for service charges for education and training in the amount of $10,000. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum. Second. Second by Mr. Karanka. Yes. I'm looking at the balance of the elected officials training fund tonight. It's 16530 That's for all elected officials in the county. And um, they don't all qualify. I mean, not all of them, no. Yeah. Um, council, yeah. count for council, it's a, a state called conference, and then uh, the five offices surveyor. Uh, the the constitution ones. Yes. Yeah. The constitution. So not not all elected officials. Well, there's only five offices. Right, but the state also allows to take uh, like a chief deputy or assigned person for training. So let's say assessor wants to take one of the deputies or office workers to be trained in a specific area, um, that can be covered through that fund. My, too. my point is, if there's, let's say there's five offices, I was assuming there were 10. If there's five offices, that's about $3,000 per office. And you're asking for 10, and you're one of the smaller offices, correct? <laughs> This is right. This is we're not going to use all of it. It's just that we don't have to worry about to the end of the year about running out and not paying for everything. Like uh, Councilman Rosenbaum just went to training. That will be covered through that fund. Uh, things like that. Mr. Uh, the, Mr. Cunningham, it's uh, not the recorder's the, office. It's for the other. She administers. Correct. The office. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That would have made the whole thing yeah. a lot clearer. <laughs> all right. He asked that question, but it's okay. Yeah, thank you. And like the last AIC conference that. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Right. So. Got it. Any other questions? Me? Yes. Yeah, yes. I did. It with Motion that. and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Here we go. Next time is Laporte Adult Probation. Request an additional appropriation from Lit. Uh, I need Riverboat Opioid Wind Tax ARP for personal services salaries in the amount of eighteen thousand six fifty-five. Good evening. Good evening. So we were looking at where we we're going to make it to the end of the year and we weren't. And I talked to Rhonda and she said the budget that I submitted was not what was approved. It was $20,000 difference. So what was approved and she said, I don't know why the council or the auditor's office didn't pick it up, but we were 20,000 20, short for our salaries for probation officers and I believe support staff fall under that. So we calculated what we'd need through the end of the year and it came up to 18655 And this wasn't spotted when we were the two people left out of the budget? No. It wasn't, it was spotted in January and we actually came before the council uh, in January, but the council said uh, they can wait and, and, and if they run out of money and then we can do an additional appropriation. I think it's in the minutes as well. Oh. Should have so done it comes to the point you've run out of money. You're running out of money. Yeah. 
So now we know it, it's not twenty thousand; it's eighteen thousand six fifty-five. So yeah, maybe it was good to wait, eh? What's your pleasure? I need to look with the balances. Sorry. While he's looking out, I'm curious. Uh, the Laporte County prosecutor just came up here and transferred about. I have to go back and look. About a hundred grand. About a hundred grand in six different accounts, and he had enough money to cover it. And you can't cover any of this eighteen thousand from all your other funds. I can only go for ten thousand. I'm limited at ten thousand. It take all the judges to approve <coughs> transferring that kind of money into this. So you're good assumption. for the first ten? I didn't say that. <laughs> exactly I'm what I heard. To me. That's what we were that was thinking. hypothetical, Mr. Miller. <laughs> you but said you could do ten thousand without going to the judges. I am yes. So, but I, but so I. So the motion would be for the eight, the remainder of the eight thousand six hundred and fifty-five. How do we find? I didn't see probation fees listed in the request. Well, you're going to pay for that. It's going to be. We're going to change that to a permission to. So we're only going to. We would appropriate just the balance. Is that a motion, Mr. Cunningham? I was joking. You know, I'm voting against it because I know you are. But you can still motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Still motion. I'll make a motion to pay eight thousand six hundred fifty-five dollars. Out of out of the lit economic development. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Molenauer. Any other questions or comments? I'd to recommend a friendly amendment to where we actually add the motion, whether it's a motion to spend or motion, or excuse me, not motion, a permission, to, permission spend. to spend to next month's agenda in order to make him whole. But can we just Coming do that now? We can just add a permission to spend. Well, it's really not a permission to spend. It'll be an appropriation out of his probation user fee. It's just like Mr. Fagan came before us. Right. So you want to put it on to next month. We can add it to next month if we need to advertise it. Yeah. All right. Okay. But in the meantime, you have... Roll call. Roll call. Okay. Did we do a vote on that? No, we're going to roll is, call here. Is, 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 is 86.55 enough, enough till the next meeting? Probably. Better be. Rhonda? We're gonna go in the red. I don't know. Well, if eighteen grand will get you to the end of the year, I think Matt does that. <laughs> See, I, so. I had a sociology degree. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Roll call, please. Yes, sir. Councilman Rosenbaum. Nay. Councilman Yagowski. Nay. Councilman Keel. Aye. Councilman Molinauer. Aye. Councilman Karanka. Aye. Councilman Cunningham. Nay. And Councilman Novak. Aye. Four ayes, three nays. Motion passes. Thank you. Speed, nice shirt. I agree. Anti. Yeah. Next item is Laporte County Drug Free Partnership. Uh, regarding the recovery residents of Laporte County, they're seeking $750,000. Good evening, me members of the council, members of the community. Mickey Webb, Laporte County Drug Free Partnership Director. Um, here as a representative and spokesperson for the Recovery Residence Initiative. I'm joined and I'm asking our committee and leadership to please stand. And I know you're very busy and you may not have had a chance to thoroughly read your packet. Um, I think there's no discussion on need and Mr. Novak has already advised that we need to keep it brief. Um, but LaPorte County is a federally designated high intensity drug trafficking corridor. That's federal designation. The CDC identifies that LaPorte County has had a 44% increase in overdose between 20 to 2022. And for those family members of the 32 individuals autopsied with overdose deaths last year, our request, um, I'm old, but I still have some fight in me. And I'm joined in my fight by our recovery residence committee because of that, we're fighting for those that may not be at this point in their life because of the disease of addiction to fight for themselves. I direct your attention to your packet and the broad base of community support. In 2021, the commission prioritized ARP funding, specifically one of the things listed was a recovery residence, LaPorte County, which we do not have certified recovery residents. 
Porter County has several, St. Joe County has several. And I think the disease of addiction impacts everyone here in this room, whether it be a friend, a family member, an employee, a spouse, perhaps yourself. It knows no race, it knows no gender, knows no socioeconomic status. But it's something that this group, who I've come to work with over the past, past year, has become very passionate about, about this need. The Commission prioritized this in 2021. Your packet includes the letter of support from Franciscan. I direct your attention also to the packet where we have a commitment from Tun and Blank for the architectural and engineering fees, which can't be cheap, and also a, a support of a reduction in general construction cost, as well as assistance in their securing support of the trade unions, and additional um, support within and consistent with their mission. We have the support of Franciscan. Okay. We have the support of a physician member of Michigan City County Council or City Council, Mayor Angie, area judges, uh, the sheriff and the police chiefs, and I call it the big three, LaPorte County Sheriff's Office, Michigan City Police Department, City of LaPorte Police Department. We have the support and a funding support from Unity, who will help guide us in our grant solicitations. United Way, 320 Recovery, which is the recovery home for this re hub for this region, where they're pledging an actual in-kind contribution of peer support of 100 hours. Um, Swanson Center, HealthLink, Doonbrook, Where, standing for We All in Recovery, the PAC Center, uh, the Center Township Trustee the Open Door Adolescent Health Clinic and Youth Service Bureau, who all see the impact of addiction on kids that they serve. Life Changes, who see the impact of addiction on those with developmental disabilities. Um, a petition from WARE membership who were present at one of their meetings this past week. Choices Counseling, uh, First United Methodist Church, Peer Recovery Specialist Colleen Henry. Um, I also direct your attention to your packet. And this is something that you received at the, this partial, uh, this, this afternoon, Steve, I believe it was sent out, um, where it gives you the guidance document for what restricted opioid funding is supposed to be used for. Page one, section four, lists recovery residents as one of the core strategies of what the restricted dollars are to be used for. And our last check was, that there is 515,000 in opioid dollars restricted, 24,000 in opioid unrestricted. Um, I know that you're faced with tough decisions as people come before you with wants and needs. Mr. Cunningham, who knows my son, may know that he may want that $280,000 new pair of Jordans. The mom and me would say, do you really need this? And I know as you're faced with those tough decisions on wants and needs, I think we can document the data that supports the need in LaPorte County for a recovery residence. That is not debatable, and I think that has bipartisan support. Um, we're joined here today, John Gilmore from President and CEO of Town and Blank, can help address any questions that you may have regarding their contribution toward this project. Um, we also have Judge Friedman, Mitch Peters, John Gilmore, Steve Eyrett, um, Marika Bay, Community Corrections, Devin Jones, um, HealthLink, Tyra Robinson Walker, Board of Directors, LaPorte County Drug Free Partnership, Katie Jasneski, Director, um, Executive Director, CEO of Swanson Center, Ware, uh, Donnie Allison, Kiana Allison, and Colleen Henry, who also wrote us a letter of support and pledging their support, but also their contributions. To each of us, we can give something. And I've asked when we did our workshop with the council, mm -hmm. what is your legacy going to be? I'm going to ask anyone here, and Mr. Gomer, can you speak to you specifically to Tom and Blank and Franciscan? Sure. Th thank you. So uh, I'm John Gilmore. I'm president of Ton of Blank Construction. Uh, Ton of Blank is owned by Franciscan Alliance, so I can speak on behalf of them as well. I'm also the chairman of the Unity Foundation, so I've got a lot of hats here. 
um, in this thing, fully support this project. We're doing a current project for the respite house organization in Porter County. We're able to raise over $1.5 million in in-kind contributions for that project. We would propose the same delivery method for this project. We've already committed to doing all the design work, all the architectural and engineering work at no cost. So that would get it started. So we're fully behind this. Um, personally, I'm behind it. My family's been affected by this, as many families have. So I can tell you from a, being a LaPorte County resident all my life that this is needed in this community. We all know we have a problem and this is one of the solutions. And I think that together we can get there and we can get there very economically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. I know I've spoken to you before, and I know in general <clears throat> you are very supportive of, of this project. We also do have uh, Mayor uh, uh, Angie's, oh, well, we did have Mayor, we have all right, Mayor, Mayor Angie's um, office uh, um, uh, assistant here. Um, she, uh, Mayor Angie, has also indicated they will be stepping up with their own Michigan City opioid dollars. Um, when we came to you three years ago, I brought Mitch Peters with us. Uh, in the time that uh, we have been working on this, Mitch has been involved with, I think, probably a two additional um, uh, projects over in Porter County. Uh, I brought Mitch here just, just basically to give you an idea of um, we will be working with him as well as Mr. Gilmore on coming to you next month with an actual budget. We have been working with Franciscan um, very closely and they are very supportive in terms of looking at pieces of property that they're willing to donate. We do not have that information for you today, but we would like to ask for an intent to spend so that when we come back next month, we'll have those figures for you and can, can basically delineate why this is the amount of money we're asking. And as uh, Mickey said, there is 515,000 in restricted. This is one of the few uh, asks, I think, that um, that have been brought to you that qualifies for that restricted. I'll turn it over briefly to Mitch. So I was thinking about getting on the county council, but probably not. Um, <laughs> in another county, don't worry. So Porter County, they got more money in Porter County. Yeah. Um, <laughs> since I've been coming here on this project, and I fully support it, and, and will walk hand in hand with the judge and, and her committee to get this done. I am in the process with Ton and Blank and the city of Valparaiso of concluding a 10,000 square foot homeless shelter. I walked through it today. It'll be done by the end of the year. And I'm just overwhelmed and feel so blessed every time. But I built, include not I, but we have built to and have a third project for a women's halfway house in the works. So I can't, and already had one existing. So I can't tell you how essential this is. There's a need in the community. It's in your community. It's in our community. And it's in every community. And it's more cost effective to attempt to address it. You can't incarcerate this problem. We know that from our involvement in the criminal justice system and the coexistence with mental health and all of the things we can do. And, and this committee is committed to doing and Ton and Blank is committed to helping you construct this. And I can't tell you what a huge advantage that has been on this most recent project. The the product that they have have put out there is the doors. I the doors were on it when I showed up this weekend. The outside doors. I've never had doors like this. I mean, this is going to be quality, and you will be proud to be a part of it. So I don't know how you get this approved for seven hundred fifty thousand. I know that that you need to do that. I would do it tonight and move forward, but how you do that, you just, you need to do that. The community needs it. People are still dying. And with fentanyl and everything, I also sit on the overdose review committee. I sit on a lot of committees, but every overdose has fentanyl in it. We have to address this problem. And this is where it starts. You can't, you put them in prison, they come back worse. 
you put them in jail without a treatment plan of where you're going to move them to, it doesn't work. They go right back where they've been. And I've been doing this now uh, with the help of my ex-wife who runs them and my daughter and my board since 2009. And, and the difference we've made in the community, when I get a text from someone that, you know, I have seven years clean today, thank you. Someone that I talked to in jail that didn't even want to go to treatment, and, and we got them into treatment and the progress they're making in their lives and the difference it makes in the community. So this is a community. Uh, we do it as a community. They can't do it by themselves. They need you. They need Ton and Blank. They need me. They need the experience. They need the treatment providers. We've got that in place for this project. This project is ready to go. And it couldn't be any more ready. Thank you. And just to confirm, this is a one-time ask. This isn't a, there isn't an ongoing, because it's they're self-sufficient once they get to. Yeah, there's some funding mechanisms available. Um, there's, com you know, I get community support. There's foundations, there's grants. There's things that support these things. Absolutely. They, they pay a fee to live there. So the, now the homeless shelter is going to be a little different, but that's another story. This is a halfway house. So it's a one-time ask. The first one I built, the county gave me 490000 and I told them I would not be back. And I didn't even go back for uh, ARPA funds. You know, I sat on the ARPA committee where they decide how to disperse them. I didn't even go back for ARPA funds. So, yeah, it's a one-time and it will sustain itself. Thank you. I have a few questions that might assist the, the council if possible. It's probably for the judge or some. What's the what's the census going to be? How many folks are you talking about? And how does somebody how would somebody get into the facility? Are they referred from drug court or are they how, how is that? to work. Sure. Um, we're looking at a maximum of 20 males, okay? And there's going to be a referral system. It's, it's going to be similar to respite. In other words, people will come from um, either the jail, they will come from a referral out of uh, treatment. Um, there will be, um, I think, a mechanism to, to come there other than those, but those are going to be the main two sources from treatment or from jail or a referral from a court. So is Recovery Works going to help yes. fund this and right. FSSA and so the, the actual funding for the facility? Correct. Okay. Besides LaPorte County Council, I hear you saying that Michigan City is also going Michigan to... Michigan City has... The other municipalities? Uh, well, we've gotten certainly a letter of support, uh, or at least a, a, a commitment of support to, to in, in general, support the idea from Laporte. But we don't have, we did not ask Mayor Dermody simply because we're looking at locating this in Michigan City. And my final question is: Anybody know what the next tranche of restricted funds is going to be in, in January or February or March? That schedule on opioid, opioid restricted. That, there's a schedule out. I mean, yeah. I'm uh, sure the auditors, everybody received it when it first came out. I think it was an estimate. Well, I guess the point is, every if, year. if we have five hundred thousand dollars, there isn't five hundred thousand. There's four hundred and fifteen thousand seventy four okay. dollars. Okay, four hundred thousand so, dollars. You know, I don't know that you need to commit. The, you know what I mean? You can commit in stages if you know that those monies are going to be available. Right. And the and the unrestricted fund has zero balance in it. So your numbers these are updated. these are as of friday i know right well these were no these are 10 15. these were prior to friday you have okay. any idea how many you need to staff that 20 men uh, there's a it's a 24 center? hour staffed i'll let mitch address well, this we, we have a model and we've provided all of our policies and procedures in our model we <clears throat> we have a director um and in some in one instance the director actually lives there and then we have assistants who live there as well and they're brought up through the ranks so you get people that become functional 
and they stay on as assistants. Some we've had stay for as long as three years, and they make a very minimum wage with room and board, and they work during the day, and then they supervise in the evenings. Um, and, and it's a model that works well for us uh, and has the entire time. So there are people that are trained to treat yeah. yep. there and too? They have all the training. Our director is a peer recovery coach, certified peer recovery coach through the state. We're a state certified halfway house. So the state uh, accepts this and acknowledges this as our model and a, and a viable model. It's been a viable model. Our overhead is fairly low. We run two houses. Um, one holds um, 16, 17, I think, with staff. The other one is 20 plus three staff, so 23. So what's that, 40 people? Our total budget for everything, food, and, and uh, is 300000 for both houses annually. But that is everything, and we have a mortgage on one of them. So now the Valparaiso isn't open yet. It's still. Uh, we've got two open. The two homeless respite shelter. Houses. There's two respite houses that are open. Okay. The homeless now shelter. The third homeless one. shelter that is under construction. Yeah. Okay. Don't and then confused. I'm going to. The homeless shelter is going to be called Daybreak to unconfuse us. And then we're going to build Kathy's Hope after that. Which is a female halfway. It's going to be a female halfway. Thank house. you. And if I could just the mention focus. as well, uh, due, due to Mitch's help and some others, uh, we have almost gotten this place fully furnished in terms of yeah. bedding, Correct. kitchen, um, appliances. So, you know, we're ahead of the game with that respect, which is very positive for us. We have a Your building. It also of includes a letter from IUN School of Social Work where they're committing interns to be able to work in the program. In that internship, um, Tyra Robinson Walker, Director of Treatment, LaPorte County Jail, is also a professor at IUN. And through, through her efforts, and she's been able to help secure that commitment for interns to help support that. We are going to operate as a level three facility. It's a state certified facility, which would require um, certain state guidelines and staffing ratios. But at the same time, um, it allows us to become sustainable with recovery works dollars, assuming those individuals qualify. Thank you. Mr. Yes. Mr. President, can I just uh, off to the side, Mr. Graham, Commissioner Graham, can you come up just for one second, please? <laughs> Not the hot, this is Mr. Yagalski calling. Thank you. Absolutely. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ms. Gramos, it, it, did the commissioners approve this for, I a, pro we did. for a project? For a project. I'm asking, hang on. I know. I, I, I got it. For a project. <laughs> I believe we did. Yes. And then was that a couple of years ago? Uh, that 2020? It's, in, it's a copy Probably of it in the. Last year. All right. Time last year. And it was. Um, we've. I've sat in on some of the meetings. I know Mr. Merzinski. I don't know if he's on, but he sat in on some of the meetings, and it's been something that we've. Um, Mr. Novak's been on it. Yeah. Um, okay. We've really supported it. We've we've talked to. I, I get it. Just I'm just using the reference that if we're going to use the ARP money, we have to have a right. commissioner project, it, and that. It, it was approved and stamped by the commissioners on. Uh, November 17th, well, yeah, it was stamped on some, by two of the commissioners. Uh, one must not have supported it, but, uh, but two I think out of three. November 5th was the agenda year. date. Yep. Uh, 21. Okay. So this has been on the books for a while. I'm, yeah. I'm a little older than most of these people, so my memory is not 100%, but I believe when we had our first joint meeting of ARPA funds between the commissioners and council, it was generally supported by both parties. And the amount was $800,000 originally. So our last last question is, uh, Mr. Stables, how much money do we have in the ARP fund to use? Well, after we didn't spend anything today from it, so it says $1,245,000. Okay. We would it, strongly recommend using opioid restricted first since it's more restricted in its uses than ARP. 
I understand. Uh, Mr. Yep. Yelsky, also, I don't know if Mr. Ro Novak told you, but you all committed money to a project that I think is going to come back to the council. Correct, right. 1.5 million. So but I, I, I guess I have a question, and this might answer your question. My question to the auditor's office is, if, if the judge contacted the auditor's office and was told that there's 515000 and there's money in the uh, unrestricted account, and that doesn't reflect what we have here, because our packages came prior to Friday, is that... If you'll, re if you'll remember, your packages, uh, when, when you're given a total, it takes out anything that's appropriate. So, so the number you so gave the judge sense, was incorrect. But they have two different numbers. So the number you gave the judge was incorrect. It wasn't the actual amount in that fund to be spent. To be spent, no. But if I gave it to them or who gave it to them, but it probably was the actual cash balance, is what my guess is. Okay. So four hundred and fifteen thousand is a more accurate number. Yes, but that is zero that and zero in the to figure out. Right. That does figure out. So it's it's not usual that we would give that to a department. It's usually done for a council meeting. And send out. What was that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. You got that off the website? Okay, but maybe there might be some appropriate as she stated. So that, yeah. yeah. I don't get you wrong. May. may you, Mike? Yeah. Is there yeah, there's a, like there's a, yeah, there's a few things. One, totally in support, and we're going to try and get the motions going in a second. I also learned that Indiana Criminal Justice um, just released a new grant that's available for furniture, employees, payroll. So there's a whole new wave of funding and there's over 40 something million dollars in it. So that's another possibility to go along with this. I know that they never pay for, for the construction, for the physical facility, but learning, and I just learned that today and it probably just came out within the past couple of days. And I just wanna make sure everybody hears it. There's even more hope. And even the state recognizes that there's more hope for, for doing this. And so um, are we looking for a motion of support? Are we looking to do this tonight? Motion of support. Motion of support. Motion of support. Yeah, we can only support. I'm going to make the motion of support until we have some, until we get your final numbers for next month. And then um, and we can figure out where we got to put it. Yeah. So I make the motion. Motion of support by Mr. Rosenbaum. Second. Second by Mr. Question. Molenauer. Question. Did you have? Um, did you state Michigan City's amount that said they would promise or no? They did not. So that was just the mayor's office saying that they were they were considerate. That's correct. We are going to the council. Uh, either. So when we come when we come back at, at our November meeting, there should be some unanswered questions. We might have a firmer thing on the property, and Money. also Michigan City, and then the Healthcare Foundation who's been a big part of all these ongoing meetings, still has not committed their dollars. So they're going to be committing dollars also. Okay. I just want to thank this group because I know how hard you've worked on the, uh, on this, how much extra hours you put in. I know Steve's driven a truck over to Porter County and stored things. And uh, my kudos to all of you that put in that time. Motion to vote. Thank you. Sorry, he's question. just writing his notes. All right. Nope. Okay. All, right. no, no, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Thank you. If Thank any you. of you would like to tour the respite houses or the new construction project, um, yeah. I'll give you money. Mitch is happy. Mitch is happy to. Yeah. <laughs> Call John. John. We got okay. John's number. Thank you, John. Thank you. It'll give you just enough. Thank you, everybody that came out and all your work on this. And Thanks for standing the whole time. <laughs> hopefully we get this through. Yeah. Appreciate it. Moving on, LaPorte County Council requests an additional appropriation from ARP for the um, Michigan City Go ahead, finish the line. It's Commission on Social Status African American Males for $4,000. What's your pleasure? Um, I have a technical question first. When this was appropriated, it was listed as African American Males of LaPorte County, and now we have a different name. Um, this is the correct name, right? Michigan City, City Commission on the Social, Social Status of African-American. I, I don't think that's an issue, Mike. 
As long as it's not nope. initial, as I long as we're good. not doing anything. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Mr. President, his social status. The name that emails. The first name up. We got it's it given in a letter to the, uh, by. Okay. And Thank just, you very much. Right. I just want to briefly add that um, I believe it was uh, close to 50 participants. Um, I want to give thanks to John Boyd, and I can probably say to you that all the kids have 100% attendance rating. Um, and none of them are in trouble with getting in trouble in school. They all go to school. So and that, that's the best thing about this. Thank you for the pictures. I shared it with the rest of the council. Yes. Yeah, that was, it was uh, yes. And just the last thing I wanted you guys to know, because uh, our last meeting, we proved to um, go to our city council to ask that the county commissioners and uh, council become appointing authorities. So that will give you the uh, opportunity to appoint someone who you like or whoever you want to. We don't start. like anybody up here. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be somebody from the res from uh, a resident or whoever you want okay. from wherever. So um, that will I'm hoping that be on the next agenda of Michigan City. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve out of ARP funds because the only place we can make it a session. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Karanka. Is there any questions? We'll need a roll call for that one. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman Cunningham? Nay. Councilman Gikowski? Nay. Councilman Mullenauer? Aye. Councilman Keel? Aye. Councilman Rosenbaum? Aye. Councilman Novak? Aye. And Councilman Karanka? Aye. Thank I you. Screw it up, 5 2. Next <laughs> item is LaPorte County Juvenile Services requesting an additional appropriation, uh, capital purchase for transport. Transportation vehicles not to exceed $167,260. You have the floor, sir. Yes, sir. Um, approaching the council, good evening. Um, we have four vehicles that need replacing. I sent everyone the information, and I hope that you received it via email. Um, we've got a 2013 Dodge Caravan that has 111,000 miles, 254 we have a 2013 Dodge Caravan that has 109,884 miles. We have a 2010 Chrysler um, van that has 67,374 miles. And then we have a 2007 white Dodge van that has 47,118 miles, but it's been out of commission. Also, um, uh, before we make this request, I want to uh, respectfully bring to the council's attention that um, in December, uh, January area, we wanted to come and ask you for vehicles then, but we were sent information about enterprise and filled out forms and that never came to fruition. And so we're at a point right now where um, we need those four vans uh, immediately. Um, I took them, uh, went to the garage, our county garage and spoke with the gentleman named Sam who uh, looks at all of our vehicles and he agreed 100% with us that all these vehicles need replacing. Um, if you didn't know, because I don't think we've ever come, um, it's been a long time since we come before the Council of Acts for any type of vehicles. At one time it was funded by the DOC, but they no longer do that. Uh, those vans that are, are used for transportation of residents to the hospitals, um, anytime a youth is injured or uh, uh, something happens to them, they must be transported to the hospital. Anytime a youth is restrained, they must be transported to the hospital. And every youth that comes to our facility has uh, to have TB test. Also court appearances. We um, Transportation occurs every Thursday and every Tuesday. Every Thursday in Michigan City and every Tuesday in LaPorte. Um, we also have statewide placements, residents who require life assistance for issues such as drug, suicide, depression, etc. may be placed in specially limited time group homes. So we utilize those vans for statewide placements um, as well, DOC transport, and also for professional evaluations of the residents. And keep in mind that all these things that I'm mentioning can all happen concurrently, and that's why we need uh, the fleet of vehicles. We also have two NOVA programs. Uh, one for uh, LaPorte, one for Michigan City. And what that consists of is two of our employees going to pick up residents, bring them to the center um, in LaPorte, and then transporting them home. And in Michigan City, we have the same process. 
and these happen on a, a daily basis, Monday through Friday, where they'll pick them up and um, bring them back home. Uh, we also have a GPS program that I failed to mention, and that's for any resident that is on GPS. We have our community supervisors who check in uh, with them and, and see how they're doing, go to their homes uh, and make sure they're all right. And also in addition, juvenile probation, they also um, utilize our vans. Um, I went on the statewide site and looked at the ward recommendation and what they had was a 12 seat passenger van and the cost for that 12 seat passenger van is $50,486.38. I also looked at a link that I was sent by Mr. DiMartino um, from Sourcewell and all of the vans that we were looking at, um, did some research and found the top four vans based on reliability from car and driver and what would suit our needs. And none of those are available at this time. Um, I also went locally. I went to Magnuson Chrysler and also to Honda Bozak and they gave me estimates um, for base level model 2025 vehicles. Uh, the 2025 Honda Odyssey was $41,815. Uh, the Chrysler Pacifica was $39,837. Um, we really need those vans. Um, the primary issue with a lot of them is they're rusting out because they're parked outside and 365 days a year and, and they can become unsafe. And they're for the transportation of our, our juveniles and residents, and uh, that's our request before the council. Such a pleasure. Uh, I have a few questions, if you don't sure. mind. Sure. We we, I I want to tell you the speed and and, and responding was uh, incredible. Thank you. And I just want to go over a few things so everybody gets to hear it. Um, currently, your fleet, if I remember, is six vehicles. Yes, we have six vehicles. So we got a couple, as I heard you say. Just or just can't be, you know, yes. they're not repairable. Um, but I do wonder because I always try to think down the road how we would like to, like we do with the ambulances and, and some other mm -hmm. other places, we've asked them to kind of do on a rotational basis mm -hmm. so that we don't get caught doing four out of six. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if there's any way for us to do two now and two next year, but I need to hear it for, I need you to, you know. Yeah. Re answer that think that out with me so yeah, re res respectfully um i can see doing three now and one next year if we're going to be guaranteed that vehicle uh, remember we had proposed to come before the council at the beginning of the year this year but because of the enterprise situation which kept getting pushed down the road we're looking at a year later and we still don't have vehicles that we needed uh, a year prior to and so that's why i res respectfully ask the council to consider uh three this year um, at least three, and then we could look at one for next year. But the two and two would, 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 would hinder what we are trying to do. And remember, the vehicles are used concurrently. We could have someone at Kurt Court in Michigan City, someone in LaPorte. Yeah, so that was my next question. On the average day, how many vehicles are, are on the road? We could have all of them on the road. And remember, we're down one vehicle. One of these vehicles is just dead. It's been dead since December of 2023. It's sitting in our parking lot and it's there. So we've been scrambling. <clears throat> and is there any attempt to um, trade them or trade them in? For, any, well, that's, is there any trade in value if there's any, however? I, it would be very low. And I haven't inquired about that since we, okay. I still have to figure out how we deal with that since they were DOC funds. Yes. Okay. Have to, have to yeah, that's, yeah. I was gonna come up as soon as you were saying that. We have to be careful, but we cannot trade those in on that. The yeah. funding can go. You could sell it and the funny go back to your thing, but we can't use the money ourselves. Okay. Right. Got it. To, okay. You have to yeah. talk which vans were actually yeah. Yeah. Those Three vehicles would be 125, 445. If you just divided it by four and mm -hmm. paid for three. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the high end vehicle. The, I, the high end. I mean this is let's yeah. be I, I actually the, the difference between the two vehicles if we went with the Honda Odyssey that'd be one hundred sixty seven thousand two hundred sixty dollars. If we go with the Chrysler Pacifica it would be one hundred fifty nine thousand three hundred forty eight dollars. Or if we just looked at the single vehicle it would be thirty nine thousand eight hundred thirty seven. So there are some savings if we went with the Chrysler Pacifica. Is that the one that had a sunroof, moonroof? Um. I wondered about I wondered about that when I read that um, 
it's I don't know. I know there's packages that, but I would suggest I wouldn't think you'd want a vehicle with a moonroof. Remember, the vehicles that we chose were their base level models. The way that that is the base level model for Chrysler, and it just comes with the package at base level. It comes with it. That's not something we said. Hey, no, I, I realize that yeah. was probably a package, but maybe there'd be something that. To me, that'd be a waste of money, you know, yeah. unless you. Yeah, but then also, I'm wondering you. Um, you've been. I thought I thought there was two of them that were down. Uh, just no, you're saying just we one. Have, we have six total vehicles. And right, I know two, that. Two of them are, are well. One of them is down. We have four vehicles that the county garage said you need to replace these four vehicles because we're spending exorbitant amounts of money keeping them under repair because they keep breaking down for various reasons. I know that. I talked to them out there also. Yes. Yeah. So um, we have four. We have four vehicles that need to be replaced. Two of them that we have a total of six in our fleet. Uh, two do not need replacing. But you've been operating with five yes. all these what several couple of years now. No. We've been operating. How long has that one been down? It's been down since December of 2023. Okay. Yes. So you've been operating with five then. Correct. Um, not six. And uh, one's is one equipped with a cage or anything? Yes. And was that one of the ones you're going to have to? Yeah, that's the one that's down right now. So you have to get yep, somebody to install correct. and. Correct. And that'll fit in these other ones? We don't know yet. We don't know. More than likely, it will not fit. I have, into the vehicle. I have a question for Guy. Does this, this has been approved by the commissioners with the price? I mean, it's not, no. they're not going to state QPA. Mr. It's been before the commission and he, that he can approach the council. So my, my question is. Go ahead. What's your question? Does the, does the price of 119511 meet the letter of he got two prices because i think there's only two vans is that mean or it, can we get Listen, to check the state qpa price because i'm sure there's a price that you need to uh, but i believe he didn't he said they weren't available. yeah we, the award recommendation no source well wasn't available correct the state qpa you checked yes i sent this to you yes you did and what's that say that's a, a four transport 12 transport vehicle and that came in at fifty thousand four hundred and eighty-six. That's the only van they had on the state yes. QBA. That's what I saw from the link that I was sent. I went there and looked for a transportation van that would fit our needs, and that's what they had. So, let's, you can't let's, you, you can't bypass the, the purchasing statute. Well, no, no. I'm, I, I'm I'm just saying to say that there's something that's that's local. You, you you just can't do that. We want to make this work. Now I know that that Ford dealership or where they got the the the, the electronic Fords, those were on a QPA. So and I think and there I might remember, be something on this. I think and I remember in the past that there we had many Dodges that were a local dealer. That was approved on the uh, the QPA. So there's got to be something there on the I QPA. I think the difference is he's looking for a transportation transport van, whereas it would just these minivans are just minivans. Yes, you know what I'm saying. We were looking for what was cost effective, right. and keep in mind I also went to the county garage and said, "What are you able to fix? What are you able to deal with?" They recommended the Honda and the Chrysler. And also the, this vehicle, need, yeah. Go ahead. And yeah, Honda vehicle. is made in U.S. It's made in Alabama, so you're good with the Honda too. If we can find one that would meet the qualifications of the QPA. Can we? Can, let me ask you this: Could we hold this over till next month, and we can make sure we got everything done? I know. My 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 preference. I know what your preference is, is to get it done now. I know it is. Uh, and as I brought up I know. earlier, we this I, I wanted to do this in December. We're going to get it done. We just need to make sure it's done right, Mr. Yagowski. And give you first. Okay. Uh, I, I know we're going back and forth. So our garage is Ford Chrysler GM uh, qualified. So they could easily fix a Ford as they could fix anything else that's on there because most of the time you take it back to the garage anyway, okay. to the Ford dealership or whatever you're doing with it. Okay. Since you already have one vehicle, the Ford, would you be willing to at least go with that one right now till we can figure out your bidding? Because that one is a certified vehicle you can get right now if you want. Okay. Let's go with one baby step at a time and then we'll figure out what you can get from the state on, the, on, their, on their buy program. 
Okay. So you are you telling me that when I was I'm suggesting to, I'm not telling you no, nothing. No. And <laughs> is, are you suggesting that transport van yes. that you got the state QPA on? Yeah, you already know one vehicle qualifies. Is that would that, is that too big work? of a vehicle for you? Would that work? Actually, it it is okay. too big of a vehicle. Yeah. You know, I went there looking. Oh, sorry, never mind. Yeah, it's it's, it's too bus. big of a vehicle. That's what I thought. I know, but I'm just asking right. questions here. And what, what, the um, because we're a juvenile services center servicing kids, the type of vehicle matters. You know, the appearance well, matters. I I don't disagree with you, but I'm trying to help. I was trying to help right. you, but if that's right. not going to work, that's not going to work. Right. Then. Right, and that that van was fifty thousand, so I was trying to save the county some money. I understand that too, but this is not. I don't understand. Right now. I don't understand. Appearance matters. I mean, fifty thousand dollars in a in a well, decent sized vehicle. I mean, well, I'm just confused. For for our purposes, because it not it we don't as far as a typical transportation van, let's say like the sheriff's department would use they would have compartments to put kids in the back with no visibility closed off no outside view and so you don't want that no well is that what this is no these are these are passenger vans well then there then there, there is outside view then but yes. it's but it's like okay. a, it's too big it's it's like a you're talking about the four or 16 passenger they're 12 they're yeah. 12 you know they're big large vehicles and so, so and they're more room than what we what we actually need. Go ahead. Maybe that's the one you'd want to cage in. It's it's still more than what what we would need. Those are for if we have a transport. Um, like right now, we have probably seven juveniles that are adult files, and uh, just transportation transporting them. Um, if we had to go on a long trip, if we have someone who is violent, physical, so forth and so on, it'd still be a lot of van just for one person. Right. But we do need a secure van. Normally the, the physicality that may be involved is a transportation of one person. How it wouldn't be multiple so, yeah. people that we would transport for a, that would need the cage. We only have one vehicle uh, that has a cage because that's uh, rare and far between, but it does happen. Yeah. So let's go back to the need, it's right? Cool. The need is, is four vehicles, but what's yes. the necessity of each vehicle, right? How many seats? Is there restrictions that you were talking about? Um, you know, size, you don't want a tour bus, right? Correct. But but how many people are we talking about transporting any one time and how many YSWs or other employees would be with this individual? No, n as far as our Nova, everything fluctuates. <laughs> Nova could have anywhere between one um, it could have uh, four, five, six, and plus when we transport for Nova, we always have to have two employees. You've got to keep in mind that transportation involves a minimum of two of our employees along with the kids that we have to transport. So seating for six is what it's sounding like. At least, yes. All right, seating for six. Well, is that, how many of these vans? Seven, eight. eight. Okay, so there's several rows of seating there. All right, that, that brings us down to why we're... Well, we're down selecting the vans and not being in you know, like an SUV or something like that. Because yes. my first thought was base level explorer or something of that nature. And ask Mr. Heeg in the back there, Sheriff Heeg, who buys these on a regular basis, where we would find some of these that aren't the police interceptor models, obviously. But if there's dealers that work at a rate that's going to be less than what we're seeing now. So eight seats, passenger model. Yes. Okay. So would, would it, a different type of vehicle work besides a van? Um, I, I think from our research and looking at cost effective, I, I think I mean, that- interceptors are expensive now. I think if, I, that, I, I don't think that- an, Oh, I mean, just saying. An interceptor or would would have enough room for our purposes. They're, they wouldn't have nearly enough room for- I, I get it. Yeah. So, so what's that? Hank's brief, can you get, can you get Hank up after you get answer your question? Hank's brief, can no. So again, I'm going to suggest that, and and I personally will work with you to try and get this through the see, make sure that the state QPA is exhausted. If not, we at least get other prices, so it's a comparable price on these vehicles for the for the uh, our November meeting, and we'll have it done by then. So if if the council would entertain a, a motion of support for at least three, and then we can get it taken care of so that we're Meeting the letter of the law. Well, he's not going to say anything different. No, he's got his <laughs> you know, I'll call on him. I'll call on him. Okay. You don't call on him. I'm just helping. I know you helping are. Anyway I appreciate I that. 
I need to help. I appreciate it. Mike, not like what he's got to say, though. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the points is the fact that we're also entertaining the um, enterprise fleet management for potentially for next month, right? You said talk to the rest of us and see if there's a possibility well, of that right. being right. the agenda. So, leaving it open. You left that question was open. asked. A question was asked. Thank yeah. you. Yes. So let me. It, it, so you're looking. What you're suggesting is motion of support for three, for three vehicles and one for next year. And one for next year. We. So does that? We don't want to. We're not we going to. We're, we're not going to bind the council. Next, we got a whole new council coming in next year. So we're going to. We're, we're going to give you three, and you're going to have to sell it. I. I don't mean a whole new. <laughs> so. I'm planning sure. Again, keep keep in mind we're dealing with vehicles that are aging. I agree. I agree. We, need, we needed them in December of 2023. He just means we can't you, vote for it next year. We can't, we, can't, we, we can't commit for that. I think you better take the three. I was yeah. going to suggest two. Take the three. Take the three. <laughs> so so I would entertain a motion of support for the three, and then we'll come back at the November meeting to finalize this. Okay. Motion. Motion by Mr. Karanka. Second. Is Second by Mr. Rosenbaum on the question. And to clarify, this is a motion of support, just indicating that we're giving like our favorable right. inclination towards this, not as a go-ahead to start making no. purchases. Or had we had had we had state QPA. good numbers or state QPA, we'd be moving forward right now. Okay, but that's that that's the caveat that we're and, using. and you're going to then yep. discuss it. Okay, yep. with him. We, we okay. talked about it last. Okay. Yeah, Mr. President, very quick. I promised, Mr. Head, you can I. Can, can you step up? Please step up here, sir. Mm -hmm. Got to get you on the mic. Since you didn't talk last time you were up there. I was just going to say that the 39000 for the vans that he offered, that was really good price. I mean, considering we're paying forty six, forty seven for the police interceptors. SUVs. That's what I, I know. Well, I was There's, just... We can't use a pretty good price. <laughs> right. And also, thank you. Stan, this was their government fleet rate, if that makes a difference. So, from and, and that could that so, could be that it's their QPA. Price. So if they have a government fleet price, then they've had to go through some. Right. Well, we just, we just need to get, need provide that info. We just need to get that thing that says that. Okay. So so we're right there. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on. But Mr. What? Campbell, what what we did with the <coughs> Fords that the we heard about the electrified <coughs> Fords was that we just got an email from the dealership saying that, you know, we are part of the cooperative buying and it's government and then we were good to go. So if, if that dealer, whoever it is. Okay, very good. Yep. So, so basically what the council just wants to see the comparative rates from that with so, what we have. So I think Mr. You, Rosenbaum might have an amendment and see if this flies. And, and if this works, I'd I, I like to do that. You just said they have a government free fleet price, which may mean they may have a QPA. So in order to move this forward, I think we can change the motion to say that if it's a, a QPA, to go forward with uh, not to exceed 120000 for three vehicles. If it's not a state QPA, we'll be back in November with the proper document. Okay, so basically the burden then is upon me to email It'll all, be, all the members of the council and- We'll, we'll talk and no, you, it'll, if, be, if, it'll if, be approved if, through the attorney's right. office. Yeah, you don't have to go through us again. Right. Okay. That I'm trying to make it as simple as possible right. that if you got, if, if, if it's there, do it. Right. Okay. The burden but, on you is to contact whoever you're dealing with at the dealership and get that information. Oh, right. should go to you, it should be Martin. Me or Mr. Novak. Yeah, okay. Mr. we'll talk, we'll okay talk. With that? Okay. Yeah. You're good Mr. Campbell, if you should find out that it is covered under a QPA or some sort of competitive purchasing agreement, um, I'd at least appreciate an email just so we know that it's all buttoned up. Okay, thank you. you absolutely. Yeah. So, I'm good with the friendly and, amendment. Go ahead. Let's However, we got to figure out an account here. Um, is this lit economic oh, development? Economic. So this is a condition. Like economic development. Lit. That's what I agree with. So yes. Okay. Everybody. Okay. All right. So this is not a motion of support. I'm sorry. No, this, this is, not, no this is a conditional, this is a conditional appropriation. Conditional appropriation yes. with, with conditions. conditions. With conditions. Okay. All right. Just for clarity, the one vehicle that's remaining, I would have to approach the council in 2025 and start the process over. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And this is what 120,000. Is that what was said? No, to yes. exceed, not to exceed 120. Okay. And the other thing is, is those state QPAs are usually that by the year, the so you would need, might need to get that. And it, the know. other thing, of course, is. If you check to make sure that they weren't grant vehicles, because in your department you're going to have to sell it 
retain your own money for the vehicle back. We can't use it for a trade-in value for a regular car. Right. That's what happened in the past. We've dealt with these you issues. You need to make sure what the regulations are on that. Okay. That way you can just get rid of them. Right. Get them out or of them. But you can't get trade in a grant car for a non-grant. Non right. Thank you. All right. Roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Councilman Cunningham. Nay. Councilman Yagowski. Nay. Councilman Mollenauer. Aye. Councilman Keel. Aye. Sorry about that. Councilman Rosenbaum. Aye. Councilman Novak. Aye. And Councilman Karanka. Aye. Five ayes, two nays, motion passes. Call me in the morning. Thank you. All right. Next item is LaPorte County EMS. Wait, did we say put uh, Request an additional appropriation for fuel. Um, oxygen and base supplies, $10,000 each, and service charge reimbursement for uh, paramedic class tuition of $6,500. And with talking with uh, Eric, this was, um, they had a person that was currently in the class, and um, instead of Lapore County, Lapore County would have paid for it if we'd hired him before he got the class anyway. So she went on her own. Right. We, we take by so it's an incentive it's and an incentive she paid though. on her own and yeah right. it's similar to what we did i think maybe in february uh we reimbursed one they uh, have to sign a two-year commitment to us right. for us to reimburse it so so we can take them separate all at once whatever you want to do the other two are just end of the year you know it, it's our fuel and the oxygen and just higher call value you know we use a little more so motion to approve at a riverboat all three. Second. Motion by Rosenbaum, second by Molinar. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Boop, 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 boop. All in favor to have a roll call? Go for it. <laughs> Councilman Cunningham. Nay. Councilman Molinar. Aye. Councilman Keel. Aye. Councilman Novak. Aye. Councilman Yagelski. Aye. Councilman Karanka. Aye. And Councilman Rosenbaum. Aye. Five ayes, two days. Motion passes. I have one small other ask. Uh, per county policy, you guys have already approved uh, for me to spend out of my donation uh, and public outreach accounts last month. Mm -hmm. However, per county policy, if any of that's to involve food, I need to get your blessing. On December 12th, this is also an invitation. December 12th, we're gonna do an open house for the provider of the year and our 50th anniversary at the Health Foundation of Laporte, beginning at 11 o'clock. Open to the public, elected officials, past and current employees. It won't be anything big, so don't come thinking you're gonna fill up, but you I need, need our permission or commission? It's commissions for that. I need both. Both. It says got it there? needs the blessing of the commission and the counts. Hmm. Motion of support. Second. Should it be in the middle? You say the middle? Motion of support by Mr. Rosenbaum. Second. Mr. Cunningham. Is there a moat? Is there a not to exceed? Is there? Is there? A... Uh, we can put one on it. Of. Yeah. Is a thousand dollars enough? Perfect. Perfect. I accept it. So we have a motion of support not to exceed a thousand dollars to spend on this event for food. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Aye. Thank you. Next item: building maintenance. Request additional appropriation from the accounts for electrical shortage in the amount of two hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. Good evening. Good evening, Cheryl Listinski. I'm the facilities director and. I brought Angie Davis up here. She, I'd like to introduce you to her. She is the assistant director, and um, she's in the field where I do the administrative. She's out in the field, so if there's any field questions, she's here to answer those. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, Mr. President, did you get a chance to ask about the elevator contract? Um. We uh, just cut. cut okay, about that. So that's right. Let's talk about it. So um, uh, I know that 
we have additional repair elevator, that's fine. But uh, elevator, of course, quarter contract, that comes out of the budget. Why why, are, why is that not being paid out of the budget? Why are you short a whole fourth quarter? Doesn't make any sense. Um, because we had a repair for the control board for the doors in the museum, which was approximately... But that's not a contract. I, right. I, you're in a re elevator repair. I totally get this. Yeah. It's been... Um, I pay elevator contract out of elevator repair. I do not pay it out of our contract account. Because okay, I remember budgeting that amount, so that's why I was asking. So That's how it's always been that I know of. Um, so if you have a repair, you don't have the money to pay your contract? Something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You may. All right. So no, we so, spoke early, earlier this week, right? So yeah. uh, budgeted forty-eight thousand dollars for elevator repair. Yes. So they've consumed the forty-eight thousand dollars on repairs and subscriptions and everything else, right? Yeah, it's elevator slash repair. So we do pay the contracts and repairs out of that account, and um, so I paid um, Schindler the contracts out of there. I paid three quarters of Otis. I paid um, elevator permits out of there, and I've also paid uh, the museum um, control board. So your repairs exceeded the amount that you had originally <laughs> budgeted, and you used part of the, obviously, the amount for the fourth quarter. Budget. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. And your second question is your electrical. Um, I know you, this has been switched around some, and don't necessarily agree with it, but so service and, char and charges. So we have the part where it's the fee that you pay NIPSCO, so on and so forth. Then you have repairs. Uh, how do we, okay, at the elevator, you kind of explain how you threw all that together, but how did you guys explain how you put all this electrical into one big pot? Okay, so um, first of all, I did revise the 245, not to exceed $245,000 to 189500 okay. Um so uh, electrical has always been electrical, whether it be utilities or, which I did speak with Adam about this, whether it be utilities or repairs. Um, that has been going on for several years. Um, we, For any repairs, we only do have a wiring account, and that is only budgeted $8,000. $8, okay. So, um, All right. Thank you. Yeah. In the... In the future for next year and we might have to go in and tweak your budget first sure. of the year or next month to to kind of separate that a little bit and maybe take a portion out of electrical and move it over into wiring if that's to make yeah. it so it balances so that would be electric it. bill is electric bill water bill is a water bill so that it's easier it's for us to solve yeah. That's something yes. we discussed at length when we met. That would be great. Um, yeah. The other portion of that is just making sure that we have good, strong dis definitions behind what our accounts are meant to be for. If, if it says electric, I assume it's electric utility, but it, not everybody would have that same definition because it's not been defined. It's just one word. So, so I guess the last question we, we met today too. Same thing. Uh, the migration work. Uh, huh, that's that one's been, been removed. Been removed. Okay. I so, make sure. Okay, thank you. No I, I'd like to make a motion for 189500 for electrical and then the other amounts 4625 for le elevator repair oh. and elevator fourth contract quarter contract 4635 uh, to come out of Riverboat. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum out of Riverboat. Second. Second by Mr. Karanka. Any questions? It wasn't it wasn't 245 anymore, right? It was no, it's 189500. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Quick question. Oh, as, go ahead. It relates to the, as it relates to the electrical, um, about how much of that do you anticipate is work-related as opposed to, um, like, utility bills? It should all be utility. Utilities, I'm expecting to pay approximately $270 more thousand dollars in um, the remainder of October approximately $70,000, and then November and December, 100000 Our electrical bills have been running 
a hundred thousand dollars a month. I believe Mr. Keel's question is of the one eighty nine five hundred. Is that all going to pay utility bills, or is that project or work right. also? Um, also electrical repair, um, which. I've kind of estimated, but it's it's kind of hard because we do have a few more months, <clears throat> but possibly around 15000 You don't have anything right now? You're just saying in I, case... I have some up. bills, okay. and I got some more bills right. expected to come in. Okay. Does that answer your question, Mr. Keel? I thought it was... Yeah. I was kind of thinking it was all electric bills. But... Okay. Roll call. Councilman Novak. Aye. Councilman Keel. Nay. Councilman Rosenbaum. Aye. Councilman Yagelski. Nay. Councilman Cunningham. Nay. Councilman Mollenauer. Aye. And Councilman Caranco. Aye. Four ayes, three nays. Thank you. Thank Passes. you. I thought I called it. Next item is LaPorte County Community Corrections. You need to get on the agenda sooner next time so you're not. <laughs> you're not just saying. I agree. <laughs> um, asking for service charge, oh, drug testing. We talked about this last month, didn't we? Yes. We asked you to come back? I'm not sure why it was placed on the agenda. I didn't request this. You didn't request $25,000? We requested 50 something last time and you gave us 29, I believe. Out of you said you thought you could get it by with that, didn't you? I did, and so Based I'm not sure. You had said that for the rest, that's why it's on there. Anything other? You don't need it? I'm not sure if we will need it or not. Uh, but you can, can come hold. back in November? Mm -hmm. You sat here the whole night? Second. <laughs> second. God bless you. Motion to table, second. Motion to table in a second. You can make sure she gets on the agenda first next night. Absolutely. <laughs> All those in favor of tabling this till next month in case she, if she does need it. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Gosh, you could have said that during department head reports. <laughs> Should have got it. Oh, she is oh, requesting additional appropriate appropriation to release budget funds from community corrections, personal service, group health. You're subtracting 156000 Two hundred and seventy dollars and fifty-eight cents. We were told we needed to do that in order for our budget to be approved downstate. So, how's that going to be paid then? We're taking it out of your. We were told we we over budgeted, so basically it just needs to be put back as cash balance. So, real quickly, are we talking your grant budget or our budget? This is our project income, which is part of the grant. Okay. All right, I just want to make sure. So we're pulling it out of that budget. And then we're going to have to. It'll just be, it's a reverting fund. It'll just go back as cash balance, not an appropriated amount. Okay. So you'll still. It's still ours. We could use right. it or ask okay. for it again, but we just over budgeted for our health insurance. For this year. God bless you. For this year. God bless you again. <laughs> You're the only one in this county that budgeted their. Office moves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. You should run for office. I'm telling you. You should. All right. So um, we need a roll call on this, or just? Uh, You're not, are you spending more money? No. Okay. Don't. Don't. I just look. 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 It's late. <laughs> just answer the question. Although, is there a motion? Motion to, or to make this correct. Second. Motion by Mr. Cunningham. Second, second by Mr. Karanka and Mr. <laughs> Mickey Yudelski, because he and Marks, <laughs> Marks and Mr. Yudelski. We since about two to five. <laughs> yeah. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank you. All right. Any comments? Ms. Speedy, as your uh, liaison, I uh, respectfully apologize that you didn't just send me a text message earlier. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Yagowski. Yes. You know, I've gone, you know that, uh, I won't speak for Mr. Cunningham, but him and I, over the budget process, we voted no for a lot of this stuff because we truly don't have the numbers. This is this is not the first time. We've gone a couple of years back where we don't, we don't, 
we we got a 10 percent raise and we don't know about it till the following year and we're trying to make up for it this year too it's insurance stuff that wasn't paid it wasn't put down i i have a motion that i'm i'm not happy with the situation of our emotional non-support of, of what happened with our budget process this budget process has not been a good year for this year whatsoever and the last three years have not been good because we have not gotten true numbers we were in a meeting one time was we had four million dollars in a hole and before we left the meeting we were three hundred thousand dollars in a positive i don't exactly meeting to bring it up but i have no faith in this budget process we had this last year it's been one of the worst budgets i ever had and i worked with a lot of people before but this was this 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 is just uncalled for for us to have to have these numbers and try to make decisions. So my motion is just that I have no support whatsoever in this uh, in the budget process. Motion of support by Mr. Yagelski. Second. Motion of support or lack of support? Lack of support. Lack of support. Motion by Mr. Yeah, Yagelski, second by Mr. Molenauer. Is there any questions on that? There and then, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? One last thing here then. Nade. 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 You Nade? Yep. Correct, Nade. Yep. So the last thing here is uh, we supported uh, the auditor with his decision to make some decisions, again, based upon he thought was right for the office. But now I've got another case. I know this, this person very well, Alan Ceranic, and he he has now filed his suit for six hundred fifty-one dollars. Us not being able to do simple things in our department, I've, I, as example, pay these type of bills. Now we're being sued, and by you know before it's all over with, it's going to add up to a lot more money than the six hundred eighty-one dollars. So this lawsuit was filed today against Mr. Stables. I would love to support and I had supported him in the past on doing his job but this is just where we're going this is not where it's gone too far and I'm not getting emotional I'm just saying that this is I don't know how do you how do you defend this type of stuff is what I, my motion but my, my motion just my point doesn't make it on it can I speak to this you can if you like it so I don't care um Commissioner Matias made an unauthorized settlement with Mr. Cernick she had no basis to make a few years ago um Mr. Cernick is Shaw Freeman's former law partner and this is a political act on his part timed a week before an election to attempt to embarrass me. If Mr. Cernick would like to settle that amount and split it 50-50 and be done with this matter, I would be happy to do that. I think that's what you need to do, because I meant in the past, as you know well, you could, if you could be the, the go-between. Yes, in, yes, in we'll the past. Split the difference. Know, we, in the and, past, you know we've done this before in the past. We have, thanks to your involvement. And we'll, we'll call, call it a day. I believe several of us were involved in that subject. Yes, and those just yes, I'm, you were as well. I, say, I apologize. It was, it For was, clarification, was um, Mr. Stables, uh, you're not in a race a week from now, are you? You said it was for political purposes to embarrass you. Yes, it's intended to embarrass me. It's political. That's so, my belief. So, the, are, are you still involved in a race? How does it involve you politically? I am supporting candidates publicly. And, oh, I know, see. You think he's branched out to some police? I got you. Okay. Yeah, that's what's going on. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Molenauer to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye.